and Bill 2022. Members' motion with no legislative effect. Mr. Frankie Yick's motion on reinforcing Hong Kong status as a regional logistics hub. Two members will move the amendments to the motion. This council will proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. Later, I will first call upon Mr. Frankie Yick to speak and move the motion. Then I will call upon Mr. Kennedy Wong and Mr. Luk Chung Hong to speak in sequence, but they may not move the amend amendments at this stage. The joint debate now begins. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Mr. Frankie Yick to speak and move the motion. Mr. Yick, President, Madam Deputy, Madam Deputy, I move that the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. Madam Deputy, the uh, Logistics Hub is one of the pillar industries in Hong Kong. It accounts for about 20% of our GDP, employing about 17% of the population. It shows that trading and logistics industries are very important to Hong Kong. However, our throughput volume has been dropping. Hong Kong's ranking in 2022 first half, we ranked the 10th compared to the previous time. We have dropped by one um, position. The 14 5 year plan has clearly stated that Hong Kong's status as a shipping, trading, and logistics centre is to be enhanced. So the government should dovetail their efforts in this regard. In the 2022 policy address, it is mentioned that the uh, Transport and Logistics Bureau will work with the trade to map out uh, an action plan to improve to develop the logistics industry in Hong Kong by promoting the use of technology. The trade welcomes this initiative. However, when it comes to development of any industry, land is important. We have a Hong Kong is at a prime location. We have a wide network in terms of land, sea and air transport. About 70% of the container throughput is transshipment. With online shopping being so vibrant, Hong Kong becomes an overseas warehouse. In order to dovetail that, we need back of house facilities and space to store these transshipment. There is also loading, unloading, storage, packaging, all these different procedures. On top of that, there is also uh, cold storage, including um, fresh food, electronic parts, as well as pharmaceutical products. The trade wants the use of automation, whether it's the use of ro robots or an automatic um, system, land is required. The logistics industry faces a si acute land shortage problems. However, the government has been releasing land on a very small basis. There's only 6.9 hectares of land in Kwai Ching in 2018. There is area 49 in Tun Wun, 3.9 hectares, and Kuala One in uh, near the airport for 5.3 hectares. In July, there is a 5.5 hectares of land in Kwai Chung for a multi storage commercial car park and storage. Over the past decade, there are about 20 hectares of land made available. There was the area 38, 40, and 46 in Tun Mun, and the Hong Kong Johai Macau Bridge, artificial island superstructure. Now the government said that there should be planning and studies afresh. Logistics industry used old industrial buildings for storage. In 2021, the government launched revitalization plans for industrial buildings. There is less available buildings. The tray has to turn to brownfield sites. According to the planning department, in terms of the use of brownfield sites in 2017, out of um, 1,410 hectares with active operation, close to half of them is related to the logistics industry. However, with a keen competition from housing, half of them, that is, uh, brownfield sites in Hong Shui and Ha Chun, have been reacquired by the government. The government said that in new development area, there will be land set aside for logistics. If there is about 37 hectares of land in Hong Shui Kyu, uh, and also 24 hectares of land set aside. 
Some of the site will be for multi-storage of industrial buildings with a plot ratio of 5 to 7 uh, to, re re to reprovision affected operations. However, the construction will only be available this year, so there can't be a seamless transition. Some brownfield site operators have to stop operation because of um, a scarcity of land. A lot of these trades are from the logistics industry. The, the industry has been se severely hampered. Currently, only monetary compensation is made available for them to find other sites to continue operation, but there is no land available. I thank the Development Bureau for conducting initial assessment for possible sites. But even when you can make the application, you will have to go through uh, hoops and hurdles that takes over se that takes over several years. In the end, a lot of these operators choose to stop their operation. With more land being reacquired, the blow dealt to this industry is will continue. Even the government can't get land. If that is the case, how do you suppose smaller operators are able to get land? If land can be made available for short-term use, uh, for storage and vehicle repair, that will be great, but there is very little of such a site. If you want to uh, set up operation, you will have to put in an initial investment investment of, of tens of millions of dollars, and the short-term tenancy will only last for five to seven years. The tray, in order to survive, a turn to automation. When the when the land they have is uh, up for renewal, they will have to put up the tender price, which will add to their cost. The tray has high expectations of uh, the new bureau because of the name logistics added to it. But there is uh, no addition to the manpower within the bureau on logistics. In order to promote long-term development of the logistics industry. They should listen to the trade by setting a dedicated department for logistics. They can, they sh they can also mirror the practice of the airport authority by setting up a statutory body to map out long-term development plan for the logistics industry. In relation to land, the government can draw reference uh, from uh, Eco Park by, identif uh, by identifying land in uh, Chunmun for because the site is close to um, the container terminal. Land should be made available at an affordable price for a longer term so that the tray is willing to invest. Assistance should also be given for the tray to use technology. In order to tie in with the dual circulation uh, new development layout, we reckon that there will be more transshipment activities in Hong Kong. In Dongguan, uh, there is the uh, logistics park set up by the airport authority. It is. Um, it is for intermodal uh, logistics operation. I hope that uh, this can be extended to other places as well. The Dongguan arrangement can be um, can be copied in uh, in Zhuhai for transshipment cargoes um, to be handled there. The supply of a manpower should also be increased. Land should be made available. I so submit. I now put the question to you, and that is Mr. Ohan Ki Yik's motion be passed. Dr. Kenneth Wong, 
I thank uh, Mr. Frankie Yee for moving this motion. In 2022, uh, the, the full freight amount has been on the de decrease. Under the 14 5 year plan, the central authorities clearly support Hong Kong to enhance its status as a shipping and, and logistic center. Therefore, I would like to move my uh, amendment uh, to include the aviation industry. Among the 10 BCS uh, port uh, for uh, air cargo throughput, we register 5 million tons. We are again on the very top of the list. Our airport uh, is uh, very busy. We need to introduce more measure, uh, apart from the uh, runway uh, system, which will be commissioned uh, a year or so later. We also have the capacity of uh, uh, 10 million tons of air cargo throughput in terms of capacity. And we should also facilitate the uh, further development of a cold chain uh, Supply, supply the industry. Aviation services uh, can provide a lot of business opportunities. Aviation and car air cargo provide a very efficient and reliable service. It accounts for 20%. And also electronic commerce uh, is, uh, is accounting for 20% of the cargo throughput. Uh, many high value added and uh, valuable products are now produced in Asia, including electronic uh, products. Because of a life, uh, so short uh, shelf life and production cycle, the uh, requirement for aviation cargo, cargo aviation services will be on the, on the rise. We should attract more investors, we should set up more high end. Uh, cargo and storage facilities. And we should encourage our Hong Kong's aviation industry to tie in with the national development and to expand our aviation hustle. We should uh, promote the development of aviation services in the Greater Bay Area. There should be a platform for further cooperation. And the Hong Kong, Zhuhai, Hong Kong uh, and, and the other Greater Bay Area cities to create a platform and more airspace should be made available to Hong Kong aviation industries to expand their capacity. And we should also uh, inc allow the, uh, the regulation of air traffic of Hong Kong to be integrated with the national system. And the Hong Kong uh, a a airport, a a airport Authority has uh, taken up a share in the uh, Zhuhai Airport's operation. I hope this uh, operation can be a model for further development of the air cargo services in the Greater Bay Area. As for Hong Kong port, our ranking has been on the uh, on the decline because uh, the government has said that uh, the uh, the share of manufacturing industries in terms of our GDP will uh, will, will rise to uh, five one point five percent. And the 14th uh, five-year plan support Hong Kong's uh, development as an inter international shipping center. But there are the high cost problems and uh, land shortage problems. Therefore, we need to step up our cooperation with GBA cities so that uh, the ports in the GBA uh, would all play to their dis distinct advantages and we can achieve a win-win situation. We should also uh, promote uh, shipping to financing, to brokerage and shipping agents uh, services. We should uh, support the industry to go for the uh, international, uh, go for digital and smart technology so as to make our services more efficient. There should be matching grants uh, organized by the government or there should be low interest loans extended to enterprises so that we can have more 5G the base stations and promote the IoT the technology. With these remarks, I support uh, the motion and other amendments moved by all the members. Mr. Lok Chung Hong, 
Hong Kong is named Hong Kong. Therefore, uh, logistics uh, industry is the, the key industry in Hong Kong. And also this is the position uh, bestowed on uh, the four, national five, 14 5-year plan in the past. Hong Kong enjoy a sort of monopoly in this industry. Although the, the, the practice was a laser flare policy and we still could uh, win in the competition, but things have changed. There's a need to have greater regional cooperation so that our logistic um, industries can scale new heights. So strategy is important here. I, I write it, my speech uh, on, the, on the emotion with a heavy heart. In the past, we ranked num number one and uh, then it was a fourth or fifth, and now we are over outside the top ten. Uh, nearby, we have the Shanghai port and Yantian in Sham Shamchan and uh, Yan and Lam Sha in Guangdong. They all rank above Hong Kong. While our ports are uh, not benefit from the national development, why are we uh, seeing the uh, our, our, the drain draining of our business to other ports? So two points here. First of all, we should develop our advantage as an intermodal uh, operation. And that is a land, sea, transport. We can make the best use of our Hong Kong Chuan Macau Bridge. Some say that uh, our ports are not enjoying any uh, advantages in, anymore. But actually, there are no major ports in the west, to the west of Pearl River Delta. Hong Kong's uh, logistics and uh, transport uh, services still enjoy certain advantages. And we should also make the best use of our airports for intermodal transport. We have more uh, destinations uh, reaching half of the global population within a five hour uh, flying time. How can we achieve all these uh, outcomes? Uh, we have to upgrade and transform the logistic industry and we should promote the smart port. For example, through Industry 4 for Node, uh, Internet Plus and also the IoT development so that we can have a smart uh, cargo handling services, for example, uh, Cargo handling can be uh, elect can be carried out through electronic identification, and uh, also AIs, uh, which will require no stoppage of uh, uh, container trucks. This will enhance efficiency and also to prevent uh, traffic congestion near the term container terminals. And this is of of course be uh, an efficient. Uh, operation for the industry. But of course, we need manpower. How can we attract uh, young talents to join the logistic industry? If we look at the, uh, the shipping industry and, uh, and the recruitment of uh, seafarers every year, we have only got 20 to 30 to, uh, young men joining the trade. But this is uh, an industry with uh, good prospects. Is it because of a stereotype uh, and that is uh, being a seaman is not uh, really uh, an easy way to earn money. The government should uh, promote the, these uh, occupations to our schools through uh, video presentations etc. And we should uh, promote uh, more people to take up the senior positions in the shipping industries, and they can future, they can be p pilots uh, for our harbor and uh, senior uh, captains uh, and skippers in the in in the industry. And we should uh, improve our policies. We should uh, promote. Uh, Technology, technology upgrade, uh, there should be tax incentive uh, on top of uh, manpower training to strengthen our status as a hub. 
I support the Frank, uh, Mr. Frankie Yick's uh, motion. Please uh, support my amendment too. Secretary for Transport and Logistics. Madam Deputy, first of all, I'd like to thank the Honourable Frankie Yick for moving the motion on consolidating Hong Kong status uh, as a regional logistics uh, hub, and also the Honourable Kennedy Wong and Honourable uh, Michael Lok uh, for proposing amendments to the motion. Our excellent geographical location, unique institutional advantages, free economy and rich experience in international business have made Hong Kong one of the world's leading international aviation hubs and international shipping centres. Despite the impact of the epidemic, Hong Kong International Airport and Hong Kong Port remain the world's busiest international cargo airport and one of the top 10 busiest container ports in the world respectively. Since the reunification, Hong Kong has been, has been responsible for the day-to-day -day operation and technical management of civil aviation under the basic law, including airport management as well as negotiating and concluding air services agreements with other countries and regions as authorised by the central government. At the same time, Hong Kong has a strong maritime tradition with port shipping and maritime services supporting the development of our trade and logistics industry. The central government has explicitly supported um, Hong Kong in the 14th five-year plan and the outline of the Vision 2035 for the development of our Guangdong, Hong Kong and Macau Greater Bay Area to enhance Hong Kong's status as an international aviation hub and international shipping centre. As mentioned by President Xi Jinping in his important speech on the 1st of July last year, the central government fully supports Hong Kong in maintaining its unique status and advantages in the long run. Therefore, Hong Kong has an irreplaceable position in the country's aviation and sh shipping development. To further implement the national strategy, we have been actively promoting a series of policy initiatives in the area of construction, system enhancement, talent nurturing, efficiency enhancement and connectivity, with a view to enhancing Hong Kong's overall competitiveness and further promoting the development of Hong Kong as an international aviation hub, international maritime centre and international logistics hub. Since the uh, 12th of December last year, Guangdong and Hong Kong have agreed to adjust the mode of cross-boundary trucking from centralised cargo transfer to point-to-point, -point, whereby Hong Kong's uh, cross-boundary truck drivers no longer have to rely on mainland feeder drivers to complete their transportation in the mainland, but can directly pick up or deliver goods at mainland operation points on a point-to-point -point basis. After further communication between the governments of Guangdong and Hong Kong, the mainland authorities have reinstated the eligibility of all Hong Kong cross-boundary truck drivers to enter the mainland and the normal management of cross-boundary transportation before the epidemic since the uh, 8th of January this year and cancelled various cross-boundary truck transportation management policies and measures during the uh, COVID epidemic so that the land-crossing freight transport between Guangdong and Hong Kong has resumed normal operation. This is important for promoting cross-boundary logistics, the smooth operation of the industry and supply chains of Guangdong and Hong Kong, including the enhancement of cargo throughput of the Hong Kong airport and also the Hong Kong port, as well as the overall socio-economic development. Hong Kong is an international aviation hub and has always been one of the world's leading air cargo hubs. Even with the impact of the epidemic, Hong Kong's international airport was still the world's busiest cargo airport in 2021. We believe that with the easing of the epidemic and the resumption of normal customs clearance with the mainland and the international community, as well as with the strong support of our country for Hong Kong's aviation industry and our excellent geographical location, Hong Kong's air traffic and air cargo industry will quickly recover. In order to maintain Hong Kong's position as an international aviation hub in the long run and to take full advantage of the opportunities brought about by the development of the GBA, we will continue to strengthen our ties with other cities in the GBA, enhance the cargo handling capacity of the airport and support the development of Hong Kong's air cargo industry towards high value and high growth cargo logistics. The Hong Kong port head is one of the busiest container ports in the world, handling nearly 18 million TEUs in 2021. Hong Kong's ship registry ranks number four in the world uh, in terms of gross tonnage. Hong Kong is also a hub of ship owners with over 11% of the world's merchant shipping fleet are owned or managed by members of the Hong Kong Ship Owners Association. We have now got nearly 
are 900 shipping-related companies providing diversified and high-quality value-added mar maritime services here. In fact, um, the outline of the 14 five-year plan explicitly supports the status of Hong Kong's port and the development of high-value-added maritime services to better integrate with the overall development of the country. The outline development plan of the GBA also supports complementary and synergistic development among ports to enhance the overall international competitiveness of the PRD port cluster. In this regard, Hong Kong has been developing high-value-added maritime services and leveraging on the high-efficiency connectivity and extensive coverage of our port to consolidate and enhance Hong Kong's position as an international maritime centre and regional transshipment hub. The 2022 Xinhua Baltic International Shipping Centre Development Index report ranked Hong Kong fourth in the world, reflecting Hong Kong's position as one of the world's leading international maritime centres with a quality maritime service industry, an excellent business environment and ideal port conditions. We will continue to implement various measures to promote the development of port and maritime services, attract maritime enterprises to set up in Hong Kong, and enhance the efficiency of terminal operations through the promotion of smart, smart, of smart port development so as to consolidate and enhance Hong Kong's status as an international maritime centre. With its advantages as an international aviation hub and international shipping centre, as well as its free port and convenient customs clearance services, Hong Kong has always been an important logistics hub in Asia. Combined with its comprehensive air, land and sea transportation network, Hong Kong has been playing a pivotal role in facilitating the flow of goods in the region. The SAR government has been playing the role of a market enabler and facilitator to provide a favourable operating environment for the development of the logistics industry and through joint efforts with the industry, we have introduced various measures to support and promote the sustainable development of Hong Kong's logistics industry. We will work with the Hong Kong Logistics Development Council and the industry to formulate short, medium and long-term strategies to facilitate logistic development and to identify strategies and measures to be adopted by various stakeholders to create a favourable environment for the logistics industry with a view to consolidating and enhancing Hong Kong's position as an international logistics hub. We will also continue to support the industry to continue to leverage on its experience and strengths in providing high-end and high-value-added logistics services through various measures and enhance manpower training to promote the industry's development in the direction of professionalism, thereby enhancing the competitiveness of Hong Kong's logistics industry and actively promoting Hong Kong's development as a regional hub for high-end and high-value-added logistics services. In order to respond flexibly to the ever-changing business environment and challenges faced by the logistics, maritime and aviation industries in Hong Kong, we will continue to work closely with the industry to formulate different measures and development strategies to capitalize on Hong Kong's unique advantages and enhance our competitiveness. The action agenda for logistics development to be formulated will set out not only the measures to be taken by various sectors in a short to medium term, but also the long-term direction of our work with a view to fully seizing the opportunities brought about by the 14 five-year plan, the Belt and Road Initiatives and the development of the GBA, and consolidating and enhancing Hong Kong's status as an international aviation hub, an inter international shipping centre and an international logistic logistics hub. Madam Deputy, I so submit. Mr. Andrew Lam, I write to speak in support of the motion moved by Mr. Frankie Yik and the amendments moved by Dr. Kenny Wong and Mr. Lo Chung Ho. Logistics industry is a mainstay industry. It provides a lot of job opportunities. With the opening up of uh, the country in the 80s, uh, many uh, factories have moved to the mainland and uh, the, the land in the NT provides a lot of uh, space for the development of uh, the logistic industry. The government would, would take care of the uh, international airport and the terminal ports and the rest will, will be left to the industry. But now, with the urbanization process, over the years, we, we are now lacking behind requirements in, for the logistic industry. And many port backup and uh, storage, as well as uh, uh, container truck parking sites have to be resumed. 
So the logistic industry are now facing a lot of difficulties. It would be equally difficult to maintain and develop our hub status. Although land will be reserved for multi-story buildings uh, to, uh, to take the place of brownfield sites, but many operators find it difficult to move into multi-story industrial buildings and also the land, the, 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 uh, the rent uh, will be expensive. So the logistic industry in Hong Kong will, f will be facing ex uh, ex existing ex existential problems. And that land would be required for the innovation and technology industries and pop back up uh, operation needs land. So instead of relying on the market and uh, the development uh, so far uh, has affected the rural environment, the government should instead help uh, the upgrading and orderly development of the logistics industry. If we look around at other countries, they have been uh, focusing on enhancing efficiency and uh, the development of smart logistics operations. But in Hong Kong, smart operators account for a small minority. And uh, even for the upgrading, because of the relevant uh, restriction imposed by laws, for example, the, the headroom requirement of uh, old industrial buildings and uh, a lot of information uh, a lot of uh, new info information technology cannot be adopted, and uh, we have if we have a, a high restriction for the stacking of containers, their operation will be stifled. The government should deregulate to promote the development of this industry. We cannot just rely on the self uh, promotion, self development of the industry. The logistic industry is facing stiff competition in the region. Shenzhen, Shanghai and Singapore are very keen operators. They want to uh, grab more market shares. It's not easy to maintain our hub status. We must do more to upgrade and strengthen our advantages. And the current term government has set up the uh, transport and the logistic Bureau and now logistics is uh, handled at the bureau level. And there is a framework for the development of a modern logistic industry. This reflects the importance attached by the government. If we don't move forward, we will lag behind. If we move slowly, we are also lagging behind. Madam Deputy, Hong Kong enjoyed our advantage as under the one country, two system principle. We should establish a platform and help uh, cooperate with other GBA cities so that we can uh, strengthen our status as a hub in the region. So I submit. Mr. John Eaton, Madam Deputy, I speak to s in support of Mr. Frankie Yick's original motion and the amendments of Dr. Kennedy Wong and Mr. Michael Locke. We have got the support from uh, our country to enhance our status as uh, a logistics center and an international financial center. And the 14th five-year plan clearly said that we should leverage on our advantage uh, to lead other cities uh, so that we can all advance and develop into uh, logistics uh, centers. And our status as an international aviation hub should be strengthened as well. We have a very unique advantage. The logistics industry is uh, Hong Kong's important industry. For logistics industries, it accounts for one fifth of our GDP. In order to further develop this industry, we need to move along high value adding um, development so that we can strengthen our position as a sh shipping aviation and logistics center. When it comes to uh, shipping and logistics center, we're talking about professional services such as uh, insurance and uh, and prof other professional services. London is a prime example. Hong Kong is the same. We were once uh, a city with the highest container throughput. We faced the same challenge. Today, L London's uh, strength lies in legal services. 
uh, London is still recognized as an international logistics center. We have a sound foundation. We have a very robust legal um, service framework. We have also obtained the support from our country. We can work with trade center. Dispute Resolution Center, uh, the F uh, Financial Services Center, to become a cluster by providing uh, insurance, um, maritime legal services, shipping management, uh, brokerage. And this will also um, help other help with other problems as well. We have a sound legal uh, system. In the Pearl River Delta, we can use our advantage to complement the development of other cities. We have joined our uh, CEP. We will soon become a member of this partnership. This will strengthen our logistics hub and high value added uh, development. We should not see this as a dying industry. We should transform and upgrade this industry. I encourage Hong Kong to become a high end logistics center. We should find new um, ways to to grow. We should continue to uh, be the leader of this trade in the world. Mr. Kingsley Wong. Thank you, Madam Deputy. In order to strengthen Hong Kong's logistics hub, we are talking about aviation, shipping, and land. A lot of large companies have uh, left Hong Kong. We do need to move towards automation and smart operation. We need to train more local talents so that they can uh, move towards high value added development. For pilots, they can earn um, over a million a year, but they need to be a master of a ship first. So you need to attract youngsters to work as a sea crew. They can study for two years. They become an intern, and then they be, and then they can become a master in seven years, earning fifty thousand dollars. There are few people joining the trade because of lack of publicity. These good jobs are not taken up. The government should uh, produce um, dramatized series to let. Youngsters know that they can also be successful uh, sailors, not just pilots. We have brokerage, insurance, and legal services here in Hong Kong. But there are no corresponding courses in tertiary education industries. We need to have these courses. If we have sufficient quality manpower, then we can attract shipping companies to come to Hong Kong. Acute manpower shortage also affects aviation um, transportation. The airport is far away, and they, people have to work long hours, so there are always vacancies. We now have intermodal transportation. We have uh, storage, and several years in several years, the Hong Kong Post uh, will have their new centers commissioned. The government can provide transportation subsidy. There can be monthly passes for workers to use. In terms of land transport, in 2014, there was a fund set up for. Land logistics and shipping, lo uh, aviation and sea logistics, but there is no such fund for land transport. Manpower in this regard should receive the subsidies 
so that they can get proper training. And there is also a lack of parking spaces. The government should put in place car parks, Cross-boundary drivers uh, should be allowed to use RAT test instead of a PCR test so that they don't have to wait for testing at these centers. I support the original motion and the amendments of two other members. Mr. Chen Siu Hong. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I speak in support of Mr. Yik's original motion on reinforcing Hong Kong status as a regional logistics hub. And the two amendments. Hong Kong is a primed um, entry port, but with other cities emerging, our situations change. In 2004, <coughs> we have about uh, 20 million TCU, but in 2021, uh, is less than 18 million TCU. According to Alpha Liner, in 2022, the first half, Hong Kong's ranking has dropped to 10, behind Ningpo, Chaosan, Shanghai, Singapore, Fushan, and Shenzhen. Our logistics industry faces challenges, lack of manpower, lack of land. And in order for Hong Kong to continue to develop as a logistics center, the government should put in place a long-term blueprint to uphold Hong Kong's uh, status as an international logistics hub. A lot of brownfield sites has been required by the government. Existing operators, uh, say, say for example, storage operators, will have to find their own site to continue. There is a long-term shortage of land for logistics. The trade said that uh, they only are given um, fragmented sites. There are about 21 hectares of land provided in the past decade. Previously, they pro they've undertaken to provide 100 hectares, which is a huge source for. The government also said that, they, that these operations should take place in the multi-storage buildings, but the rent is high and the lease may be too short. And if they move to multi-storage, multi-story um, buildings, there cannot be a, tr a seamless transition. I ask the government to take into account the concerns of the trade. Let more land should be provided, so that uh, continuous operation can be guaranteed. Under the 14 five-year plan, the central authorities clearly support Hong Kong to enhance its status as an as a logistics center. The government should pro should put in place measures to help that. In 2016, in April, uh, that was the Hong Kong um, Maritime and uh, Port Board. It's been running for six years, but it's uh, outdated. They have not taken into account the changed operating environment. In the past decade or so, there is a census. There is a consensus of the trade that a dedicated unit should be set up to promote development. They should draw reference um, of the uh, of other authorities by putting in place a long-term blueprint. Development of smart uh, logistics is also a major trend. It is said that um, uh, they sh there will be measures to promote uh, flow of information. I ask the government to draw reference from mainland practices. Automation should be used, say for example in Shenzhen, Sheko. Their ports have been transformed. Um, smart pla platform is used. They make use of 5G, AI, Beidou navigation, automation, smart port, blockchain, uh, low carbon initiatives. Apart from hardware and software, for Hong Kong to become a regional logistics hub, there should be uh, supplementary um, um, effect of the in, of the international airport. We have Bai Yun, Bao An, and another um, uh, another airport. We also have some. Um, major route airport in place. It is a good cluster. There should be coordination 
put in place so that all these different airports can uh, work together. In the Greater Bay Area, there is Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Hong Kong ports. They can all leverage on their own uniqueness and work together to develop high-end services to create a synergy. I so speak to support these motions. Thank you. Mr. Chen Kin Po, thank you, Madam Deputy. I'd like to thank Mr. Frankie Yik for moving this motion today so that we can discuss the issue about uh, developing ourselves into a regional logistics uh, hub. Well, a number of years ago, we managed to uh, be ranked number one um, in terms of international logistics center. We can directly uh, ship our cargo um, out of Hong Kong. And since then, we, have, we are now ranked number nine. Well, the logistics industry in Hong Kong has been suffering all along, and yet uh, given the new economic order and also with the return to normalcy by our country, I'm sure uh, the uh, logistics sector will thrive again. And the 14-5-year plan has explicitly said that it supports uh, Hong Kong's development into an international logistics centre and also air cargo uh, centre. So in terms of our logistics and also air cargo development, they have already become our national strategy. And obviously, they have already studied that very hard. And with the country's support, uh, we will definitely be able to resume or restore our uh, status uh, as an international logistics hub. In fact, we have to look at the physical logistics uh, industry and also the maritime services sector. Well, first, um, on the maritime services uh, sector. I think uh, when it comes to this, uh, we have to uh, um, make reference to London because they have a long history in shipping and it's one. Not, it used to be the um, top um, or the leading centre and yet uh, it's um, very much a sunset industry. Still, it's ranked one of the international maritime centre. That's because uh, they have the maritime services, uh, um, well, they have the um, maritime financing and also legal services and also uh, brokerage services. So they have these available. And therefore, looking at uh, their experience, I'm sure we also can uh, develop uh, the same services. Yes, we have got the advantages, but then for high-end maritime services, in order to attract more high-value added uh, uh, enterprises to come to Hong Kong, and also, we would also have very good connections uh, with GBA. We have a very mature financial market and also a very comprehensive legal system. We can provide arbitration, financing, uh, insurance, and also management services. And uh, we are also capable of extending this uh, to all over the country. And therefore, there is a lot of potential by setting up such networks. And uh, we can also uh, become the super connector. And also, we can promote these services. And we would also be able to expand our services all over the world, uh, taking insurance as an insurance industry as an example. We've been doing a lot of uh, maritime insurance, but then the thing to do is to attract more talents. And also for the maritime industry, yes, we would not become um, ranked number one, but then uh, we will still be able to become very competitive because in southern China, we are also one of the uh, transshipment centers and hub. And if you look at other ports, uh, we can also transport uh, cargo directly out of our port. And there is no conflict whatsoever with our neighbors. And also under the dual circulation policy, we can also uh, complement one another in the GBA. And then we can also build a cluster of ports. And then we can promote our developments together. In, um, in summary, we can have multimodal or intermodal um, transport mode uh, so that um, Within the logistics chain in the GBA, we can also play an important role. And we also have an advantage uh, in terms of high-end uh, products. Uh, for example, uh, cold chain products uh, and also fresh uh, uh, provision foods and so on. So I think that's also in line with Hong Kong's uh, present condition. And Hong Kong's um, advantages uh, would also come with other disadvantages. For example, um, many of the um, neighboring ports have already introduced us part management. We were still we are still very much a uh, menu oriented uh, and also the design of our port is already outdated and uh, because of the insufficient services uh, and also the port facilities uh, well um, ocean liners are not able to um, um, to uh, bore in some of these areas and therefore the first thing to do is to attract and train up more high-end talents are in different areas. We would also have to look at the hardware for the maritime uh, sector. And we've been developing uh, smart uh, logistics, uh, but then we still haven't been able to deal with the hardware problem. And therefore, we will have to enhance our facilities. We might even need to look at uh, the possibility of developing new terminals.
next time, uh, Zhao Manguang, or Hong Kong has always been the uh, top um, uh, fundraising platforms of our country, and we also we are also one of the um, investment uh, destinations, and uh, we are also a bridge between um, our country and the outside world. And uh, in terms of logistics center, well, since nineteen uh, since nineteen seventy eight, uh, the investment has increased from um, uh, nine point three percent to uh, to. Uh, 12.34 percent, and uh, since 2021, we have also become one of the major sources, one of the main sources of uh, import, uh, and we are also one of the uh, major exporting markets of our country, and uh, that accounts for some 60 percent of the total cargo burden. Uh, because of the epidemic, in particular the fifth wave, uh, it has uh, dealt a very severe blow to our sector. So both um, in the air, land, and uh, sea uh, sectors. Um, uh, the operations have been uh, seriously affected, and the cost and time needed uh, would also go up. For example, taking a 40 TEU uh, shipping cost, uh, it has gone up from $3,000 uh, to about uh, 17000 about six times uh, the usual cost. Uh, and also the time required uh, would also go up from four hours to 72 hours before arriving at the destinations, and as a result, a lot of business uh, has gone, and that would also affect Hong Kong's status uh, as a logistics hub. Hong Kong's logistics industry requires um, a lot of um, um, help uh, because of the challenges and adversities. Well, during this time, because of um, uh, our, uh, because uh, we have been later in entering the uh, smart um, development, but then we still have an advantage because we have a lot of potential. We have to know that um, Hong Kong in itself. Uh, uh, has been a free port uh, which has a lot of experience, and we have been able to gather together a lot of uh, overseas uh, uh, high quality products. And also, in terms of our efficiency of our customs clearance, is also very high. And in terms of our payment system, we have also accumulated a lot of experience. So, with these uh, infrastructure and policies, so in terms of uh, well, our digital economy of uh, our country, in particular, e e merchandises and so on. Well, we would be able to play a more positive role, and we can also promote um, uh, not just a traditional trade and also the transition into um, a digitized economy. And therefore, I speak in support of the original motion as well as the uh, amendments. In promoting cross-boundary e-commerce, uh, Hong Kong's government uh, would also have to put in more resources in the logistics sector in order to support uh, the four pillars of our economy. And that is the logistics uh, sector. I suggest that the relevant departments, including the um, the um, economic and um, commerce bureau, and the logist and the transport and logistics uh, bureau, would also have to look at uh, the warehousing problem because we have a severe shortage of uh, storage space. And also for logistics and warehousing facilities, we will have to put in more resources to provide for such facilities. These are the basic requirements of the sector. In particular, with the uh, northern metropolis development in the northeast northwestern part of the new territories, we should give priority to develop uh, modern uh, uh, logistics and warehousing facilities so that we can also um, uh, enhance collaboration with the GBA so that customs clearance can also be streamlined so that uh, for cross-boundary e-commerce uh, and merchandisers, they can also set up an, an ecosystem whereby we can move towards uh, more high-end uh, developments, uh, and that would also become the economic growth point. And the transport infrastructure in recent years, so we have seen uh, tremendous developments. For example, we have just completed the, the Twin Moon to Chatlap Kok uh, um, connect or, or, or uh, the uh, corridor, and that would also connect uh, with the uh, Pearl River uh, West Coast, uh, so that there can be better connectivity, and that would also bring about more opportunities. And also, given the logistics sector's uh, trends, we would also have to promote uh, the further development and extensive use of automation technology in order to enhance uh, our competitiveness. For example, in 2021, the Customs and Excise Department also worked with the uh, air cargo terminal, and they have also introduced a new system for customs clearance, and that's a very good example. In fact, digitization and digital transition would also include uh, the uh, Qingdao uh, Porta in Shandong in 2017 after its commissioning. Well, for air, well, the efficiency has enhanced uh, so that uh, they've been able to deal with uh, 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 more than 15 TE users uh, every hour. And we have also adopted this automation approach so that they have robots uh, to uh, sort the uh, 
uh, packages and cargo, and uh, the accuracy rate has reached over 99%. And they've been able to uh, sort some um, um, uh, 18,000 uh, uh, TUs every hour. Mr. Tony Chair, Madam Deputy, I rise to support to speak in support of Mr. Frankie Yick's uh, motion. I, I support the motion. I'm not a logistics expert uh, because if you look at um, the original motion, well, in terms of um, land planning, we will have to come up with a long-term policy, and I'd like to express my views on this. Well, when it comes to logistics, as uh, many people will think about uh, the airport and also the container terminal. Well, the airport was... Um, uh, well, well, we moved our airport from Kai Taka to the um, to uh, Lentau, and we have also built this uh, third runway, and also we have built the Sky City. Well, these are projects uh, that would be beneficial to the tourism sector as well as the um, logistics sector. But then, if you look at our container terminal, we also thought about expanding it. But then, to build a uh, um, container terminal number ten, well, it's been shelved for many years. One of the reasons is that uh, there is no such demand. I think it's a question of a chicken and egg because without sufficient land and without new container terminal facilities and if you're charging much more than other ports and of course they will not go for Hong Kong and therefore the demand will come down and as a result the throughput of Hong Kong's container terminals will gradually be taken over by other uh, ports because they have uh, a, a sp more spacious uh, site and also with more facilities then of course people will go for them. There was suggestion that uh, we should relocate the Kwai Chen container terminal to, say, uh, Lantau. And then we should also build the um, the uh, Central Waters uh, air, uh, Artificial Island that would promote uh, Hong Kong's um, um, maritime logistics. Uh, and at the same time, we can also spare the existing uh, container terminal site for other uses, like housing. I've also been talking to some of the stakeholders in the industry and they are very supportive of that. So will the administration look into it? Other than the airport and the container terminal, the logistics uh, sector would also need a lot of um, backup land, for example, processing, assembly, storage of uh, container uh, containers uh, and uh, trucks and so on. But then the administration has not done much planning and they have not been able to provide appropriate size and as a result, they have to make use of um, uh, agriculture land and uh, green belts, uh, and uh, whether or not uh, it's um, against the law, they will just uh, convert it. And uh, that's also one of the reasons why we have this uh, brownfield site problem in Hong Kong. And because of the shortage of land, uh, Hong Kong government has decided to, to resume most of the brownfield site in order to uh, build more houses. And as a result, uh, some brownfield site operators have been affected, and that would also in turn affect our logistics sector. And also the short-term tenancy policy of the government would also affect the logistics industry. And even the construction sector has been affected. If you look at the existing policy, well, for uh, those uh, who lease uh, government land on short-term tenancy, very often they would only be given a lease of two to three years. And every time when they try to renew the contract, uh, they would only be given a short term of several months uh, because of the lack of stability and certainty. Some. Um, uh, investors dare not invest uh, heavily in this, and they have not been able to move with time. They have not been able to upgrade themselves, and as a result, we would be lagging behind others. So as you can see, Hong Kong's air cargo and also maritime cargo's uh, um, developments, um, the gap is widening. So it has to do with the government's uh, lack of planning for land. I think uh, the two are closely related. I hope that the government can learn from the lesson. and. Um, they should also um, learn from the others. Um, it, they, sh they should more positively plan for land use and um, land uh, assignment so that uh, we would be able to have better planning and development so that there would be more momentum for the industry to develop. Most importantly, we will have to continuously develop new sites, for example, the artificial island um, in the central waters. It's not, it should not just be for housing or for the support of the uh, fintech development. We should have more diversified uh, uh, development. These are my remarks. Thank you. Lam Jun Sing, you. Mr. Lam Jun Sing. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Trade and logistic industry are uh, one or two of the four pillar industries of Hong Kong. According to our statistics, in 2021, logistic industry accounted for 23.7% of our GDP. 
its importance to our economy is uh, just plain to for all to see. Under the national 14 five-year plan, support is given to Hong Kong to strengthen our hub status. With a global competition, if we are to strengthen our international logistic hub, we should uh, develop high-value uh, transport and logistic uh, operations uh, and covering maritime law and uh, intermodal uh, maritime operations. And we need talent, but this is the weak point uh, in our system. There will be new measures to train maritime uh, practitioners and talents I hope the government would uh, regularly review the programs and also to cover more maritime uh, operations in the training program so that we can have a great bigger pool of talent to cope with the development needs. I also uh, recommend to the government that uh, there should be more promotional activities for the industry so that young people can gain a better understanding of the maritime industry and the logistics industry. According to the VTC's manpower survey on transport and logistics industry, there is a shortage of managers. They need more managers to do the planning and marketing operations. And people who have, a, who have a knowledge of IT uh, are in great demand, which is start at the secondary school stage in terms of uh, lifelong planning. Secondary school students should gain a, a basic understanding of the logistics industry. It's not something that you do if you do not receive proper education, but actually, uh, an industry that, pre that offers a very good promotion prospects. We should also cooperate with relevant in, uh, institutions and enterprises in the Greater Bay Area. And uh, job opportunities uh, can, should be offered on a higher first, train later basis. The government should also promote uh, the offering of more high, higher diploma uh, courses or from our tertiary institutions and to upgrade the skills of ex existing practitioners. Apart from manpower, we should have a long-term planning strategy for the long-term development of the maritime trade. Our maritime policy has been piecemeal and it lacks a vision for the long term. If we look at Singapore, we should not belittle ourselves, but that their experience is something that we can uh, make reference to. For example, in 2019, the Singaporean government announced a 2030 R&D roadmap uh, exploring the, the use of uh, INT for the maritime industry. The Singaporean government has also uh, published a blueprint for transformation of the industry in 20, by 2025. A lot of support would be uh, offered to their startups and SMEs uh, so that they can uh, enter the international market. They will also nurture talent for the maritime industry and they have different uh, goals set for different initiatives in the industry. So we can see that the Singaporean government is uh, forward looking and visionary in the, their policies. We should all learn from uh, the, the Singapore experience. I, with these remarks, I support the motion and all the amendments. Mr. Yim Kong, I support uh, Mr. Frankie Yik's motion as well as the two amendments moved by the two members. Uh, well, our maritime industry used to be very great. In 2001, we ranked number one and we maintained that position for some years. But after 2010, with the development of ports and also the, the development of other ports, our cargo throughput has been uh, lost to uh, neighboring ports. In uh, the recent couple of years, we have dropped to uh, the 10th place in the world. If we do not take any action, then uh, our hub status will just be a slogan. 
there are many reasons why this has happened. Well, actually, there's the in, a lack of proper connection between GPA ports, and we have an uh, overlapping the hinterland, therefore leading to fierce competition among these ports. Hong Kong has a uh, limited land, and uh, there's a acute shortage of uh, backup services. Uh, on the contrary, the, the, there is the there are only 100 hectares of backup land to support the terminals with a land of 270 hectares. Altogether, we have 525 hectares for our cargo op terminal operations, mostly in the NT. And uh, 2 million square meters of land is uh, devoted to this industry, which is not adequate. In the recent three years, the course uh, boundary logistic operation has been hindered by the uh, pandemic. Many transshipment operations have now been uh, diverted to mainland ports. Our port of operation are mainly for transshipment. If we do not uh, make the best use of our integrated advantages, and if we lose, continue to lose business, then our status as uh, international trading hub will face even more challenges. The National 45-year 45, 45 plans uh, make it very explicit that uh, our status as a hub will be supported. With this uh, development of uh, the Sky City, our aviation hub is comparatively speaking more stable. And we should uh, try to enhance our competitive edge we should, for example, uh, try to cooperate with Shamchan and uh, by extension to the Greater Bay Area so that we can complement one another. And there should be a long, medium to long term plan for the logistic development. And uh, we should uh, explore the possibility of uh, co further collaboration with uh, Shamchan so as to enhance our status. In the initial stage of the opening up of the country, there's a slogan like this. If you want to attract business, you should build the roads. And if uh, you have railway connections, uh, you are going to see an influx of money. Hong Kong is an important hub. If Hong Kong cannot act as a bridge between the mainland and uh, the outside world, our logistic industry will suffer major setbacks. Therefore, I support the motion. I hope the government would attach importance to the suggestions made. So I submit. Mr. Lai Tung Kuo, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Feng Ki for moving his motion. On the one hand, Hong Kong is still a, a, a logistic hub in the region. Our ports are among the busiest in the world. In 2021, we handle 70 million TEUs. On a weekly basis, we have uh, 270 international flights coming in, in and out of Hong Kong, but our status is on the decline. In 2022, in the leading port report, we ranked number six uh, in comprehensively speaking. Kwai Ching, the fruit, cargo throughput, has dropped from 17 TEUs to 14 million in 2020, the, the decline is very obvious and acute. S such being the case, if we are to uh, maintain our status as the uh, trading and logistic hub, we will be facing a lot of uh, difficulties. To, to deal with these problems, we should grasp the opportunities from emerging industries. This is the same for the, the trading in the industry and the logistic industry. There are new uh, technology coming on street, for example, the Beidou system introduced by our country. And also automated uh, truck driving can be facilitated by the uh, Beidou the automatic guidance system. And we have uh, the new 5G technology with low, uh, uh, low uh, lagging rate. 5G technology can be applied to many different industries and operations. For example, the crane operator can operate the crane to, uh, to handle cargo remotely. There's no need to be uh, confined to the driving 
driver driver's cabin on top of the crane. And also there should be an automatic identification there can be identic identification of driving license plate automatically and uh, the operation efficiency can be enhanced. With smart technology we can also facilitate the use of green technology. For example, the further introduction of uh, electric vehicles or like uh, the uh, Tianjin port, uh, there are two uh, wind turbines and there are also the pho photovoltaic uh, power generation and this would uh, be good for carbon uh, reduction. We should learn from these uh, practices. I'm concerned that our container terminals and uh, will be lagging behind other competitors. Many comp members have asked the government over the years concerning the development of our smart port initiative. But very unfortunately, the, what we have got is that, uh, that the maritime development port has a dedicated uh, committee and uh, the concrete proposal will be worked out uh, by, the, by the committee. Members like me uh, would like to know what uh, initiatives and proposals are being considered and what is the actual progress. I hope in a moment the Secretary will tell us more in concrete terms instead of some uh, very vague uh, expression on uh, the development. I know the industry is also working hard. For example, the remote control of uh, a crane lifting operation. Kwai Chung is doing the same. And uh, I, in order to enhance our status as a trading and logistic hub, uh, the pay should be heightened and the government should offer timely assistance so that our maritime and, and logistics uh, operators can uh, adopt new uh, technology to cope with the business environment. Uh, Mr. President, the world is uh, moving ahead very quickly. If we cannot keep pace, uh, we will be lagging behind. We will, be, uh, uh, we will lose the, in the competition. So I submit. Mr. Lo Wai Kwok. Mr. President, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Yik for moving the original motion and the two members for moving the amendments. Indeed, logistics industries have been facing challenges. There is a shortage of land for logistics operations that they need abundance of land for parking uh, goods vehicles, uh, for storage use. However, when it comes to the logistics industry, there is no land planning for them. Very often, the industry has to identify fragmented pieces of land in the new territories. However, these brownfield sites have been taken back by the government for other uses such as housing. There is uh, the, the shortage is aggravated. On top of that, there is the epidemic. Experienced staff members are forced to switch to other trades or to quit their job. These challenges are temporary and can be overcome. Hong Kong is a regional logistics hub. This is our advantage. It's unrivaled. We have national strategy to support us. The 14 five-year plan clearly support Hong Kong to enhance its shipping, trading, international financial, uh, as well as logistics center. In the GBA Outline Development Plan, there is also a support to develop Hong Kong into a transportation hub that includes the enhancement of the competitiveness of the cluster of ports, the cluster of airport, and rapid transportation system. We have cross-boundary infrastructure. We have the uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. We have the uh, Express uh, Rail Hong Kong section. We have the International Airport. We are connected to our nation's major high-speed rail network. In order to play our advantage to the potential, we, we need to continue to work on it. 
I urge the government to put in place long-term development plan for the logistics industry so as to strengthen Hong Kong's status as a international logistics and shipping center. The chief executive, Mr. John Lee, is aware of the importance of the logistics industry. In his maiden policy address, he has spent a lot of coverage on the industry. He said that he will work with the logistics board and the trade to map out a high-value modern logistics development action plan that includes uh, strengthening intermodal transportation so that Hong Kong's um, important position in the GBA is strengthened. The trade will be encouraged to use uh, technology to enhance their competitiveness. Smart initiatives should be used as well. He also mentioned about um, uh, Hong Shui Q and Yun Long. The first batch of industrial land will be made available next year. The direction is correct, but the trade needs comprehensive long-term plan. We need concrete measures. In terms of um, regional cooperation, the chief ex executive has said that uh, there will be a coordinating group to integrate into our national development. Our initiatives will be dovetailed with the 14 5 year plan and the GBA outline development plan. Regional cooperation will be promoted. The uh, flow of capital information and manpower will be enhanced. I have on a number of occasions urged the government to set up a cross-boundary transportation management a unit to coordinate resources allocation and use of uh, bridges, airports and ports. At the same time, the government should talk to the central authorities uh, on um, opening borders, on tariff, electronic recognition, um, electronic payment, in order to and facilitate flow of information, capital, and manpower. Please stop speaking. Your time is up, Mr. Andrew, Mr. Adrian Hall. Thank you. I speak to support Mr. Yek's motion and other members' motions. Hong Kong is in a prime location. It's an important logistics center. Hong Kong has an external economy. We have, um, in, well, trading activities is very important to us. Logistics is, an, is a pillar industry. I agree with Mr. Yek that strengthening our position is uh, of significance. We play an important part in the development of the GBA. For land uh, shipping transportation in the GBA, we need to continue to drive down cost and improve efficiency so that our position as a shipping center can be consolidated. With national support and policy, um, support, uh, we need to work more. We will integrate into the dual circulation. We continue. We should continue to be a super connector in terms of logistics. The 14 5 year plan clearly states that uh, we have the support of the central authorities to become a shipping center. We play an important role in the GBA. We have a prime location. We are very well connected to other places. And uh, we play an important role in connecting with the 18 countries along the Belt and Road initiatives. However, there is uh, insufficient support. And there are no short, medium, long term development plan. There is no overall support to the trade. I think outdated mentality will result in Hong Kong being squeezed out by our neighbors. They will take our place as a logistics hub. Regarding manpower, there should be policies to train local talents. Uh, overseas employees uh, should be kept at a healthy proportion compared to local ones. 
we can train our local talent. This is an important uh, condition. We need to enhance our com competitiveness. We need to develop um, more service suppliers by providing our di diversified services. International um, shipping uh, that we sh there should be more um, port calls uh, from international lines. We need to enhance our competitiveness so that we can move towards a high value adding uh, development. There will be major changes. We have. Uh, um, the trend of uh, digitalization. I support um, smart port, single window um, platform, but I was told by the trade that in terms of digitalization and uh, data sharing, they would like to see a comprehensive blueprint. The government should also um, provide more incentive and support to help the trade to um, make better use of digitalization. Facilities at ports are outdated. In a lot of different places, they made use of automation to improve efficiency, reduce uh, accidents, and to drive down cost. The government plays a very important role in uh, aligning with international standard and practice. The trade should be given assistance so that they will um, not uh, take the long way round. There should be a comprehensive uh, supply chain put in place. ASEAN and South Asian countries are still our major market. We need to be there first. The government should help uh, the commerce, business and logistics uh, industries. Under the dual circulation, we play an important role in the domestic circulation. We should not just focus on the mainland market. We are a super connector. We have an, a unique role. The government should talk to the trade more. Um, short, medium, long term development plan should be put in place. We should integrate with the national development. Please stop speaking. Mr. Uh, Dr. Priscilla Leung, in July we had a discussion about tax concession related to the logistics industries. That's in relation to a 50% reduction in profits tax when it comes to shipping brokerage and agency. There is another piece of legislation that is a review of the charging mechanism of um, arbitration by legal practitioners. This will further enhance our competitiveness. In 2019, there was the GBA outline development plan announced. In 2021, there was the 14 five year plan. On the 1st of July last year, President Xi mentioned about Hong Kong's position as an international shipping center. When it comes to um, soft power and services. Say, for example, my trade, financing, uh, maritime, arbitration, legal services, insurance, etc. We hope that one plus one uh, equals more than two. When it comes to training maritime arbitration talent, the City University has one uh, set up a maritime legal research center. It's very difficult to recruit professors in the relevant field. And in 2014, 2019, uh, about um, 100 million and 200 million was given to us, but still we could not recruit. It's very attractive because if you manage to obtain um, the business in maritime arbitration, uh, that will last you one year. Should we consider cooperating with um, Southern China 
to attract their students, businesses, and professors to have exchange sessions with us. We do need to retain talent and to attract talent in terms of um, hardware. Our ports cannot be called high, uh, high end or modern compared to Shanghai and Qingdao. Uh, we are quite backward because for these other ports, they have AGV. Everything's automated. You don't see any workers. They use AI to drive uh, vehicles, to plot the best driving routes. Uh, there's automation in the replacement of batteries. I watched uh, something about engineers in uh, Qingdao. They, um, they went to the Netherlands. They were not allowed to learn, and they just took a look, and they remember everything and come back to China to develop an automated pot. How come that Hong Kong can't do it? Is it related to... Our situation and policies, is it the case that our ports are privately owned? That's why it can't use a smart initiatives. Can the government intervene so that um, Hong Kong's ports can be modernized? We have an aging population and there is employment problem. How can you encourage workers uh, to train themselves uh, to dovetail the uh, smart initiatives? The government loves to publish uh, blueprints. Well, we need a blueprint for our logistics industry. We need hardware. We need software. We need to break uh, barriers. I hope the government will deliver something so that we have more information to work on, so that we have clear goals, so that we can uh, move towards uh, becoming an international shipping center. Mr. Chen Pui Long, thank you, President. Uh, under the 14 5 year plan, it uh, specifically says that uh, it supports Hong Kong's development into a logistics uh, and shipping. Uh, center. Over the years, uh, because of our geographical location, we have been able to tap into our uh, supreme um, system and also our experience in trading and uh, therefore in air cargo, land transport and also sea transport, we have a very solid um, foundation. And that would also support the development of the logistics sector. Yet uh, over the years, uh, because of the expansion of our neighboring ports and also because uh, we are actually seeing a uh, downward trend in terms of our throughput uh, and also in terms of our ranking. In 2010, we ranked number three, and uh, uh, we are now number nine. So well, for the uh, uh, maritime and uh, logistics uh, sector, one wonders whether or not it's already a sunset uh, sector. And also with the epidemic, uh, we have uh, suffered a further blow. As a result, uh, both cargo and passenger uh, flow has been affected, and that would also affect uh, the supply chain in um, uh, southern China and Hong Kong. So, uh, faced with the fierce competition globally, we have to admit that because of land planning and also uh, industry planning, we have been affected. And therefore, in terms of container throughput and also cargo uh, throughput, uh, in terms of the uh, scale of operation, within the short term, we would not be able to surpass uh, Shanghai, Singapore, Ningbo, Zhoushan, and also Shenzhen, and so on. So as a very important uh, transshipment center in the region, even though uh, we are not competitive in terms of our hardware, but then uh, we still have uh, advantage in terms of our soft power. And under the um, uh, framework for new economy, we have we are planning for the future, and we have been able to provide uh, diversified and qualified high value added uh, maritime services uh, to both uh, mainland and uh, international investors. And in terms of uh, brokerage uh, agency and also uh, funding or uh, financing services, uh, we have been working on that, and that would also consolidate our status as an high as a high end. Um, Transshipment and also logistics center in the region. Well, um, 
while we are talking about this, uh, I'd like to emphasize that uh, maritime insurance uh, would be very important uh, to Hong Kong in consolidating its status as a maritime uh, center. And yet, um, for maritime insurance, uh, we don't have many um, programs um, for training on that. And we also have a succession problem in terms of talents. Uh, we have difficulty in recruiting new um, professionals. And therefore, we need to come up with a long-term plan for training up talents in this respect. So we will have to make sure that we step up publicity both uh, in the mainland and also externally in order to attract um, uh, talents uh, from uh, the insurance sector to join this uh, business. We would also have to work with the mainland authorities and also the Ship Owners Association and also the Insurance uh, Association so that uh, we can have more tertiary institutions uh, rolling out uh, more dedicated uh, programs on maritime insurance so that we can consolidate and enhance our status as uh, a maritime center. And also in coming up with a long-term policy and strategy, in the policy address in 2022, if you look at the KPIs, uh, they said that uh, we will have to work with the industry so that within 2023, we will come up with an action plan in order to promote Hong Kong's development um, into a modern day high end logistics uh, center. Other than promoting the development of the logistics center, I also support that uh, we should have uh, intermodal transport mode uh, so that we can work with uh, Guangdong so that we can have air land and sea transport, uh, and then they can complement each other. And then we would be able to work with other cities in the GBA to build up this cluster. And then we can also build a logistics center in Hong Kong, and there would be synergy effect. So that uh, in the supply chain in the GBA, we will be able to play a pivotal role. These are my remarks, and I support Mr. Frankie's original motion as well as the other two amendments. Thank you. Dr. Tan Yue Hong. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, President. Uh, I support Mr. Frankie Yick's uh, original motion and also Mr. Kenny, uh, Kennedy Wong and um, Michael Luke's uh, amendments. Well, Hong Kong is uh, very well placed. Uh, we have the system advantage. We also have a very uh, good um, economic system. We also have rich experience in international trading, and therefore we are one of the prime location for becoming a logistics and uh, maritime center. And the logistics uh, sector is also one of the four pillar industries in Hong Kong, and it's a very important sector for Hong Kong's economy. And also under the 14 5 year plan, the country uh, indicates support for Hong Kong's uh, continued development into an international maritime and logistics center. And that has already pointed uh, the direction to us. And also, uh, in the post-epidemic uh, era, uh, we have a lot of opportunities. And uh, we must seize the opportunity. We must plan ahead so that we'd be able to um, have a long-term policy conducive to the long-term development of the logistics sector. We have to go for smart um, development and also automation. And uh, specifically, I have two suggestions. Number one, we have to further deepen our trade and logistics uh, collaboration with uh, mainland cities uh, so that uh, we have to uh, uh, be the stepping stone for many mainland brands to go out so that we can consolidate uh, our status as a regional uh, logistics hub. Because um, in particular, with some um, some hinterland cities uh, in the logistic er sector, there is a lot of room for collaboration because um, well, uh, uh, our country is a vast city and um, there are many uh, prov provinces and cities, they have uh, quality industrial products and also feature agricultural products. And yet, because of their geolo geographical locations, um, many of the spending, much of the spending would go out. And as a result, our uh, products have not been able to uh, be commercialized uh, elsewhere. And therefore, as an international trading center, with uh, the support of our logistics sector, we can organize exhibition. And we also have a lot of professional services available. And therefore, we can also become a bridge for these products to go out. And then we can also market them elsewhere, in particular for agricultural produce and so on. So uh, we also have the export advantages, and they would also be able to make use of Hong Kong to export their products to the Belt and Road Initiative countries. And Hong Kong shipping air cargo industry would also be able to help uh, transport their goods uh, out 
to other places, and that would also help consolidate our status as um, a logistics hub. And uh, through our ETOs, we can also work with our mainland cities, and we can also have point-to-point -point collaboration, and then we can also have um, connect schemes um, so that we can work with the different sectors so that for a special feature industrial products, uh, they can also expand their overseas markets through Hong Kong. And also in the region, we should also have uh, differential developments so that for, for cold chain products and also fresh produce and so on, we can also transport them. We, have, we can have high-end logistics uh, services and we can then consolidate our status as a logistics center while we develop that sector. We can also make use of our high efficiency uh, customs uh, clearance system and also our air cargo uh, transport system so that in terms of uh, the temperature control and everything else uh, because uh, these are high-end products that would require a lot of um, right conditions so that that would also mean that we can develop our high value added uh, logistics services for example for room uh, for, for temperature control uh, cold chain products uh, we can also have our tailor-made uh, value-added services in order to enhance our competitiveness. And uh, the, sec the government would also have to identify more logistics uh, sites uh, in order to solve the uh, present problem of uh, shortage of land. So that uh, that would also be conducive uh, to the long-term development of the sector. These are my remarks. Kenneth Lau. Um, President, I speak in support of Mr. Frankie Yick's original motion as well as other um, members' uh, amendments. Well, under the outline uh, development plan uh, of the GPA and also the 14 5 year plan, it supports uh, Hong Kong's development into a logistics uh, and um, air uh, cargo uh, transportation center. We would also have to take, seize the opportunity so that we can work with other GPA cities. We have to build a world class uh, ports and airports uh, so that uh, there can be differentiated developments um, in the GBA so that uh, we would be able to become um, a hub uh, for the mainland cities uh, and the world. Uh, well, we have world-class uh, infrastructure facilities. We also have um, multimodal uh, transport um, facilities and we have we are also very uh, well located and therefore we have, be we have been um, a, an air cargo center and also a maritime and logistics uh, hub. But then because of the pandemic and also because of the change in the global trading environment and also because of the advancement in technology, the spending mode has changed. And therefore, Hong Kong's um, shipping center and logistics sector have been um, dealt a very severe blow. And in terms of our international ranking, it's been coming down and it, this is indisputable. And yet, if you look at the supply chain globally, it has also changed tremendously. And that has also changed the landscape for the sector. And therefore, our, in order to consolidate our status as a logistics center, we must upgrade ourselves. We must um, seize the opportunity of high-end development. We have to um, apply uh, technology in order to see a breakthrough. And I can see that uh, the government is now providing support for digitization and also the use of innovation technology in the sector. In last year's policy address, uh, it's also suggested that uh, we will have to further promote um, the development of the sector by adopting a long-term action plan, including multimodal transport mode uh, and also air, sea, land, uh, transport uh, interfacing and so on, so that we can encourage the sector to more extensively use um, smart logistics so that we can use uh, technology to enhance our competitiveness. But recently, the State Council also announced um, a new policy, and that's uh, an outline development plan for the logistics sector. And uh, it's proposed that we should develop smart logistics, and we should also set up platforms uh, and also uh, big data centers, and we should also enhance uh, such data, and there should be closer monitoring, and there should also be more flexible uh, coordinating. But then I'd like to uh, speak on a, a critical issue, because uh, in developing smart logistics, we have to have land. And we have to have a backup site, for example, our container trucks, our backup yard, and also modernize our high-end uh, warehouses for logistics uh, and storage, and even data centers. 
um, digitization would also require a lot of land. But then, given the shortage of land in Hong Kong, well, logistics sites uh, have been in short supply for a long time, and um, therefore, we have to make use of brownfield sites. Um, well, with uh, Yunlong South and also Hong Shui Q's uh, projects uh, commissioning, the government is now resuming some of these uh, brownfield sites. But then, if you look at the relocation plan, uh, well, uh, these operators have not been able to be properly relocated uh, and they have not been able to get sites and as a result they have to close their uh, businesses. And that would also affect the supply chain in Hong Kong, which in turn would also uh, affect Hong Kong's status as a logistics center. I have to emphasize that the, the administration must uh, reprovision or relocate these uh, operators properly. And it would also have to release some of the greenbelt sites and also conservation sites in particular. Some of the abandoned fishing points uh, or fish points would also have to be used. Uh, well, if we were to promote logistics or uh, high-end development by making use of uh, smart technology, and yet uh, if we don't even have a sufficient land, then uh, it's not going to work. And therefore, we will have to follow the steps of our country and we will have to come up with a policy and development uh, uh, roadmap so that uh, we'll be able to consolidate our status. So that we can continue to take up a significant share in the global logistics and uh, sector. Dr. Wendy Hong. The logistics sector in Hong Kong has been deteriorating. In we only rank the ninth uh, in terms of our container terminal throughput far being overtaken by Ningbo and other cities. For the volume of cargo handled, it dropped by 27%, and the contribution to GDP also dropped by some 4%. As well, our status as a regional logistics hub is being challenged. There are a number of problems. We need to have other the development of other industries to support uh, the development of the logistics sector. We are a transshipment center, and very easily our services can be replaced because we do not have high value added services. In terms of uh, application of technologies and uh, the streamlining of procedures, other countries and other cities have um, caught up with us. And we also have insufficient land in Hong Kong for logistics, not to mention lack of long-term planning. Usually, uh, operators can only operate on sites with short-term tendencies, with a lot of uncertainties, they are unable to be self-reliant and this, the sites are far from meeting the demand from the sector. And the consumption market in Asia um, is great, uh, it's developing at rapid speed. But Hong Kong's strength lies with being a connector between the manufacturing bases in, Chi uh, in China and the Western consumption markets. The emergence of e-commerce also brings a disrupting challenge to the uh, traditional operation of the sector. And we are unable to um, grab a share of the cross-border e-commerce business. At the moment, we still enjoy the advantage as we fa we have little resistance uh, in terms of transshipment of cargo. And in order to boost the industry, I have the following suggestions. We should be a hub for complex hardware added goods in Asia markets. The markets are still fragmented. And there are different markets, uh, different standards for the impacts of goods, different laws and regulations, and different tariffs and customs. As Hong Kong is a free port, we can be the hub for the management of complex uh, shipment chains. We can focus on trendy items uh, and also high value added commodities. We can act as a distribution center. There are different standards imposed by different countries. Hong Kong can provide value-added services such as testing, certification, packaging, so as to drive the development of other sectors as well. 
we need to enhance capacity and plan afresh for the sites for logistics use. Drawing, the refer uh, drawing from the experience of other countries in the vicinity of uh, container terminals and airports, there should be logistics parks set up and at the appropriate locations in the urban areas there should also be port backup facilities for the use of the logistics sector so as to provide land and help the sector transform we need to um, tap the market of uh, cross border e-commerce the trend is that uh, the only uh, the inventory level is low and the um, cash flow cycle is short, we can again act as a distributor of commodities um, and we can also combine online, offline sales channels to promote e-commerce. We can also enhance the customs clearance and um, border checkpoints efficiency by digitizing the services. We're in a new era. We have new consumption patterns and new modes of doing business. We must be innovative and transform our industry and boast our status as the regional logistics hub. Mr. Benson, look, I thank Mr. Frankie Yick for moving to this to today's motion in 2019. The central authorities promulgated the Greater Bay Area Outline Deve Development Plan, and Hong Kong will act as one of the four economic drivers in the region. We will enhance and consolidate our competitiveness. We will bolster our status as an international shipping, trade, and financial center, and um, we should move towards uh, development of high-end and high-value added logistics and sh services. services. As far as the Hong Kong government is concerned, we also act in concert with the plan. In the 2022 policy address, the government puts forward three policy directions. For example, there should be enhanced intermodal connectivity to enhance air, sea, land, cargo services. Uh, we should play a more pivotal role in the Greater Bay Area. And we should leverage on our advantage in handling high-value uh, goods and promote our advantages such as perishables, pharmaceutical products, and the cold chain storage. We should also promote the logistics sector to adopt smart solutions to enhance our competitiveness. In other words, in the foreseeable future, there will be a major transformation and upgrade of the logistics sector as uh, its services are digitized and uh, and as a result we need uh, big data analytics and we also need the personnel at the middle rank level uh, for the purpose we also need frontline personnel equipped with the necessary knowledge to uh, operate the digital systems there is a succession gap uh, in the industry at the moment. The traditional mode of operation requires long working hours and working at remote locations with um, quite limited career prospects, not to mention low wages. Young people are deterred from joining the uh, sector, and because of the three-year pandemic, young people uh, have been deterred to join the industry, and there is a brain drain. We need middle managers. We also need frontline technical staff. This sector provides a lot of quality job opportunities for locals. And I believe young people should also share the fruit of success in terms of the future development of the logistics sector. Uh, the Hong Kong government should be prepared and the government should groom talents to support the industry. I have three suggestions. There is an action plan drawn up um, between the government and the sector and also the council. I think that there should be cross-bureau collaboration to draw up vocational in-service training, um, and other long-term manpower training plans for the industry. 
the government um, just launched the pilot scheme on uh, the pilot subsidy scheme for third party logistics service providers. But more should be done. More support should be given for the training of um, personnel in the industry, such as those for uh, in service practitioners, in, in service training for practitioners to increase manpower for the industry. Applied courses should be operated at the level of uh, tertiary or post-secondary level with a focus on logistics management, etc. These are high value added areas so that our new generation can still um, be given an edge in the global competition and boast our status as the regional logistics hub. Mr. Stephen Ho, I speak in support of Mr. Frankie Yick's original motion on reinforcing Hong Kong status as a regional logistics hub. Mr. Yick's motion contains policy directions, indicators, targets. He also points out the shortcomings of the government's policies. Now, uh, as mentioned, we need to work on a number of fronts, air, sea, land, in other words, now in order to fix problems, we need to fix the roads. Now in rural areas, if you fix the road such that the road is wide enough to accommodate the lorry, then um, the site will soon become a logistics backyard. And this is not what a rural resident wants. Now, this has to do with uh, the government's shortcoming and that the disadvantaged rural villages are affected. So, in other words, we need to um, have proper land planning. We have the Agri Park, and this is supported by members. Funding has been approved by LegCo to build roads build a major road because the site has been planned for the establishment of Agri Park. So to start with, we need to plan for roads to be built so that we can allocate sites for different purposes. For sea transport, I understand that uh, the Government has planned for the north northern metropolis to be built, and then, and then the buck is passed to the Transport and Logistics Bureau. Say we need another road, and on the northern side, an incinerator will be built. And I understand that a natural, um, a light natural gas offshore farm will be built. At the time when it was constructed, there was no mentioning of a road, and then, or uh, navigation. Um, what uh, cause and uh, now we need to designate a cause for the area. Now the difference is that uh, originally fishermen were allowed to fish in the area. Now it's no longer the case. As Mr. Frankie Yick said, there is a lack of support for his industry. I'd say otherwise. Instead, uh, our fishermen don't get the support they need. So in other words, we need to um, make sure that you have uh, supporting measures for different industries. Say so for fishermen, you need to help them upgrade and transform and rely less on fishing activities at sea so that we uh, can give um, the go-ahead with uh, the traffic separation scheme or principal fairway scheme. Say at another location, the government uh, tried to um, establish another fairway by uh, some through some dredging works, and then um, the government uh, said it would be all right for fishermen, and that was in the colonial era. And the government backpedaled on their works. So. The conflict that we face now is that if you want to designate a fairway there, you need to help the industry upgrade and transform. Finally, the problem among government departments is this. 
Well, remember the heat not burn tobacco products. The food and the then Food and Health Bureau um, wanted to introduce a ban without having regard to the impact on the industry, and then with a well, ultimately they came back and. Um, amended the bill uh, allowing transshipment of tobacco heat not burn tobacco products so apart from the four pillars of the economy we need to have regards to other industries these industries are stifled by government policies now i'm talking about live technology and the fishing the uh, fisheries industry could be one of the most the, the industries with a lot of potential. So let me say this to the Secretary. You need to plan properly for other industries. Professor William Wong. President, concerning the motion moved by Mr. Frankie Yick that is reinforcing Hong Kong's status as a regional logistics hub, I have three suggestions. First, we have to collect, collect data to drive research to help the logistics industry transform. We have to promote Hong Kong as a smart port city. In terms of the development of a smart port, we have to collect data from various stakeholders. These data will be useful for technological companies to conduct big data analysis and develop innovative service models for the logistics trade. This will transform Hong Kong into a real smart port city and enhance our competitiveness in terms of logistics trade. And also the CEDB should open up the data for Hong Kong's imports and exports, as well as the metadata held by the Transport and Logistics Bureau for the use of universities and research labs. The government should facilitate cross-boundary transfer of logistics data for analysis in Hong Kong so that our logistic trade can expand into the Southeast Asia region as well as the globe. This requires collaboration between Hong Kong and, other, and the governments of other GBA cities. Two, uh, the um, Beidou uh, navigation system. Currently, the country has adopted the um, Beidou navigation system in terms of um, in different navigation scenario, including agriculture, fisheries, and also um, transport. Riding on the rapid development of the Beidou um, navigation system, Hong Kong should be should become a data analysis and usage center of the navigation system, so that we can apply the navigation system in terms of navigation as well as um, for the use of the logistics trade. And also, we should collaborate with satellite experts to apply the data offered by the navigation system to our logistics trade and help to expand its use in the GBA. Third, I suggest the government facilitates the automation of logistics industry. In year 2020, the government has launched the pilot subsidy scheme for third-party logistics service providers. The scheme encourage, encourages um, logistics service providers to adopt smart technology to enhance efficiency. The government should also offer facilitation and measures, including relaxing the um, requirements for electric mobile devices to use the road. Now, the logistics trade accounts for 3.2% of our GDP. In terms of trade volume, it accounts for 19.8%. The trade is one of our important economic pillars. However, with fierce competition in the region, we have to spend our efforts and enhance our edge with information technology and advanced um, technology so that we can maintain our status as a leading logistics hub. I should submit I support Mr. Frankie Yick's original motion and the amendments moved by the other two members. Thank you, President. Mr. Holden Chow. President. First of all, I thank Mr. Frankie Yick for moving this motion debate on reinforcing Hong Kong's status as a regional logistic, logistics hub. I will put forward my views from two perspectives. 
first. Hong Kong's logistics and maritime industries are not limited to the traditional um, vessels, liners, as well as uh, container ports. There are also um, high value added maritime business, including shipping arbitration, shipping mediation, and also um, other advanced maritime business. Hong Kong is one of the most popular places for ship owners to register their vessels. These vessels would be flying the Hong Kong SAR flag when um, they are at the sea. Hong Kong ranks the fourth in this aspect in the world. It is because of our professional services. Our customers have high confidence in our professional trades. As a result, um, there is a much prospect to our high value added maritime business. So I would like to put forward some ideas on promoting high value added maritime businesses. Now we have the Maritime and Port Bureau or office. Now this office is not a statutory body at present. If we can upgrade the Maritime and Port Office to a statutory body, with greater power, it will be able to steer the development of the entire high-value-added maritime trade. I have been in touch with some stakeholders in the maritime and logistics industry. They told me that the Maritime and Port Office only conducts meetings very um, randomly. Now, if it is made a statutory body, it will, hold, it will hold more meetings and it can more effectively supervise the development of the trade. That's the first point. Second, if we can set aside some space for international maritime organization to establish in Hong Kong, including International Organization and Shipping Association, it will create a landmark. And like London, we can create an industry cluster. I mean, marine insurance and maritime arbitration organizations. By creating such a cluster of maritime bodies, we can better promote and develop our high value added maritime industry. In year 2019, the um, International Maritime Association's China office has set up a base in Hong Kong. It shows that we are definitely equipped to attract international maritime organization to establish an office in Hong Kong. In fact, the government has made an effort as well in terms of ship leasing and um, other shipping principles. Tax concessions have been made through legislative amendments. I've also written to the government suggesting that these tax concessions can create hundreds of thousands of job opportunities. High value added maritime industry would definitely bring economic benefits. I would also like to talk about hardware support. Concerning hardware support for modern logistics industry, I hope you can establish a, mo a modern logistics hub in Tuen Moon. Tuen Moon has favorable geographical location. We have the Tuen Moon Chalapkok link road with the resumption of cross boundary travel and the reopening of the Hong Kong Chuhai Macau Bridge. Tuen Moon is definitely positioned to become a modern logistics hub to cater for aviation logistics needs. Modern logistics hubs can provide a lot of job opportunities, especially um, basic job opportunities and for the people. The two moon residents will definitely be benefited and grassroots people can be employed in the trade, I so submit. Dr. Shou Chang Wing. Thank you, President. With the epidemic, cross-boundary logistics did not uh, was pushed to a halt. And also our supply system has not improved, has not um, reinvented itself under the epidemic. 
as a result, our status as a regional logistics hub has been undermined. In year 2021, the logistic and transport industry still accounted for 23.7% of our GDP. It plays an important role in our economy. We cannot afford any um, mishaps in the industry. I support Mr. Frankie Yick's motion. We have to reinforce Hong Kong's status as a regional logistics hub by enhancing its efficiency and promoting high value added logistics industry. We have to rationalize land supply policy for the trade and also develop um, a healthy logistics ecosystem uh, using advanced technology. We have to help the industry to transform and upgrade and um, create cost effectiveness and favorable conditions. We have to help the trade to overcome bottlenecks and help Hong Kong maintain its status as a regional logistics hub. First, we have to streamline um, land grants arrangements and enhance and ensure enough and um, sufficient land so that the trade can maintain can maintain its competitiveness. Stakeholders in the trade said that the government use um, the short-term lease uh, model um, with two to seven years of validity. This ramps up the cost for the logistics trade and uh, creates unstable supply of land. It affects the competitiveness and the growth of the trade. According to the Maritime Department, the throughput of our cargoes uh, between 2011 to 2021, in the 10 years' time, uh, there was a drop of 27%. In Shanghai and Singapore, Singapore the cargo throughput have increased. Now they are at 2.6 times and 2.1 times our cargo handling volume. It shows that our cargo handling capacity and um, our, the competitiveness of our terminal ports has lagged behind our neighbors. We have to address the issue head on. Since the year 2018, the government launched the single trade window to enhance custom clearance efficiency. And year 2020, the government promised to establish um, a sh data sharing platform between uh, the ports and the maritime trade. However, these are not sufficient. According to the um, latest report in year 2018, Concerning the efficiency of um, bank ship, uh, maritime banking, Germany ranked first in the world. Now, Singapore ranked seventh. Hong Kong, on the other hand, ranked the twelfth. Germany has made use of um, the advanced technology such as blockchain and also digitization of um, cargoes, data, and um, to uh, improve the arrangements. Singapore has also ushered a new era of data sharing of logistics data. I suggest the government formula, formulate a short, medium, and long-term plan uh, for land use for the logistic trade. The government should offer better terms in terms of um, lease um, validity and tenancy for the trade and also support research on advanced logistics technology and automation. And also we should learn from our neighbors and create a comprehensive and robust logistics ecosystem. We should make use of blockchain technologies and create a land sea air intermodal logistics transport real-time data sharing system to enhance the transparency of our logistics data. We should move away from passivity and upgrade our system so that um, we can have advanced data on logistics transport and increase the cost effectiveness as a whole. So submit. Mr. Roberts Lee. Thank you.
President. I'm grateful to Mr. Frankie Yick for moving this original motion, and that is how uh, we should start from land planning and come up with policies that is conducive to the long-term development of the logistics industry with a view to enhancing Hong Kong's status as a regional logistics hub. Now, uh, the 15-5-year uh, plan has uh, confirmed that Hong Kong should be developed into regional hub logistics hub as well as uh, international maritime and aviation hub and we should move towards high value added business to integrate into the overall development of the country and as for the first policy address the um, chief executive uh, proposed formulating an action plan to promote high value added modern logistics development to reinforce intermodal transport and to um, strengthen the key role played by Hong Kong in the logistics chain of the GBA, leverage our strengths in handling high value goods to promote the development of high end and high value at the logistics services and encourage a wide application of smart logistics solutions to enhance our competitiveness. Now, I have three suggestions to achieve a uh, this end, we should use the North Metropolis and develop green logistic facilities there. Land shortage is one of uh, the limiting factor of logistics development. Now, if we are to have green logistic facilities in the Northern Metropolis to suit the needs of Hong Kong and the GBA, it can also Uh, start uh, green financing bonds for uh, green projects that can promote the development of a local bond market and can help to achieve carbon neutrality by 2025 in Hong Kong. Now, we should widen the uh, scope for fundraising of green industries. We can encourage overseas and mainland logistics enterprises to uh, raise capital in Hong Kong, and they can also then issue green bonds to need the capital needs of these enterprises. We should promote data interflow and connectivity within the GBA through development of uh, connectivity of logistics data within GDA, we can simplify the clearance procedures and enhance uh, cross-border logistics development. With these remarks, I support the original motion. Mr. Lee Chan Kang, thank you, President. We, our logistics uh, industry has a long history, and that is a very solid foundation with our comprehensive aviation network. Uh, we have benefited from all these advantages. We are now a regional logistics hub. In the 14 5 year plan, Hong Kong should enhance its status as a shipping, trading, and logistics center. And in the action plan for GDA development, Hong Kong has been given the support to enhance or strengthen its status as an international shipping, maritime, and logistics center. We must grasp this opportunity. We have high potential. Uh, the uh, airports in southern China can deal with about uh, 8 million tons of cargo, and the figure will rise to 20 million in the future. So we must enhance communication with mainland cities to promote uh, the five major airports in Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau, and we should complement one another so that we can achieve a win-win situation, and uh, we should um, reduce uh, our network overlapping. Now, we can have uh, transshipment and encourage uh, travelers to uh, transit in Hong Kong that can promote uh, both a passenger and freight transport. And as for uh, sea transport, now because of the epidemic, uh, the logistics industry has been dealt a blow. Although we are still among the top 10 ports in the world, our ranking has fallen. In 2004, we were top of the list, and in 2010, we fell to the ninth position. We have about 1,480 uh, ETUs uh, throughput. 
with only one third of uh, the throughput of Shanghai, which has a throughput of 40 million ETUs. We should continue to use technology to enhance our productivity. We have uh, lagged behind this regard. Some are saying that our port is dying, and so we must expedite the development of a smart port in Hong Kong. The country uh, is developing its maritime business and um, Hong Kong's position as an entry port for the mainland has uh, weakened. We must uh, talk to the government or the central government so that uh, there will be no further relaxation of aviation network in the mainland so that we would not lose our status. To ensure the status of Hong Kong, we must leverage on development opportunities in GBA. We must develop with ports uh, in GBA a partnership. I have always advocated that the SAL government should be more proactive in forming partnership with uh, Shenzhen and uh, Guangdong. We should set up a statutory office, and then we can build our own industries according to our advantages. There can be streaming of cargo. We can build up a proper port network so that we can have a system of modern and uh, productive and effective port network. To strengthen Hong Kong's status as a regional logistics hub, we must ensure that we have sufficient cargo throughput. So in terms of division of labor, we should continue to play our role as a transshipment center. Shenzhen as a production center should focus on um, export. So long as uh, we have our uh, a respective positioning. If uh, we line up our different advantages and we uh, have good division of labor, uh, take into account uh, our different resources in manpower, capital, and uh, use of INT, then we can build, a, we can uh, bake a bigger pie so that one plus one uh, can uh, be greater than two, and then we can enhance our competitiveness and advantages so that we can contribute heavily to the development of the country. With these remarks, I support the motion and the amendments. Mr. Kwok, I come. Thank you. I speak to support your regional motion and the amendments to enhance our prosperity. We must further reinforce our status as a regional logistics hub. We must, on all fronts, enhance our uh, shipping, maritime, and uh, aviation business. As mentioned by many members, Hong Kong used to be the busiest port in the world. We were uh, at the top of the list, but then we fell to the ninth position in 2019. So in fact, uh, we haven't advanced at all. We must uh, put in more resources and strengthen our advantages. The uh, pandemic has uh, caused great changes in the whole industry. Uh, E-commerce is now developing. There is a great demand for cargo transport and uh, with a greater demand for precision and efficiency. So we must catch up with the times. As mentioned by members, we must have uh, both the software and the hardware. Hardware-wise, we must have more land for logistics or make good use of resources already invested in this area to boost the capacity of the industry. Now, just to quote one example, in there is land near Kuiting Terminal. Land has been zoned there for port backup use. 40% of the land hasn't been fully utilized. This is a good example to illustrate my point. Now, in terms of software, I'd like to uh, say a bit more on this. As we all have heard, now if uh, we uh, do not excel in academic studies, we may uh, end up in the transport trade. I think we should change this mentality. The logistics industry is now modernized and uh, digitalized. There is now greater demand for skills and professional knowledge. So we should project a professional knowledge um, image for this uh, for practitioners of uh, this trade, and we must of course enhance uh, their pay and uh, also um, conditions of work. 
many post-secondary institutions provide uh, e-commerce and logistics and uh, supply chain related programs. So if you're willing to join this trade, young people can have a bright future. However, there are some figures I'd like to share with you. According to statistics information in 2021, uh, people engaged uh, in logistics, hardware, uh, warehouse, etc. Now, uh, the value is $726.7 billion, up almost half from what it was in the past. But the total income of practitioners in 2021, it was only $740.1 billion. Uh, a fall of 6% compared with 2020. So the total business turnover has grown by 50%, but uh, wages has dropped by 6%. Each worker in this sector can bring about 540,000 in 2020, but then the figure grew to 900 and 80,000 in 2021. So how can we ensure that workers in this sector can share the fruit of um, prosperity in this trade? While costs are high in Hong Kong, we are very flexible in cargo business. Whether we talk about the airport or the port, we operate with very high efficiency. Our clearance procedures are simple and we have a mature uh, capital raising market. These are our inherent advantages. So long as we fully utilize uh, these advantages, we can restore our past glory and regain our status. And then we can reinforce our status as a regional logistics hub. Thank you. Mr. Yeo Park Lang, thank you, Mr. President. I speak in support of Mr. Frankie Yick's original motion and the amendments moved by two other members. We have the mainland as the hinterland and we are connected with the world. We have quality um, infrastructure facilities. So we provide reliable quality logistics services. We are an important regional logistics hub in the APEC region. We are the gateway to the Greater Bay Area. This is why the central authorities provides clear support to Hong Kong to enhance its status as a shipping trading logistics center. However, we cannot sit on our hands, be uh, sit on our laurels and be complacent. 20 years ago, the Hong Kong container terminals was the busiest, busiest ports around the world, but uh, our ranking has continued to drop. According to Mr. Frankie Yick, we're now ranked only the 10th, comparing to the rapid development of uh, transport infrastructure in the mainland that accounts for our decline. There are also other factors. Take cargo storage fees as an example. We are 60% more expensive than the facilities in the uh, in Shenzhen and 40% more expensive than those in Singapore. Now, Singapore has a grand plan in 2013 they undertook a reclamation on the western side of the country to reprovision their port and that they used the state-of-the-art um, container terminal. The reprovisioning will be completed in 2024. It's been partially commissioned. I hope that our government can learn from the Singapore experience. It is important to develop the industry. So in terms of the long-term development of Kuaishong container terminals, a holistic review and study should be conducted. If need be, it should be reprovisioned. If the terminal is reprovisioned, we can release valuable land in urban areas. We can put it in a more strategic location. Dr. T. Kennedy Wong's amendment refers to the pivotal role played by the Hong Kong International Airport. And indeed, it's a, it's a top-ranking airport in terms of cargo throughput. Although it only accounts for 2% of total cargo throughput, it, clo um, it accounts for 40% or $4 trillion of cargo volume um, handled in Hong Kong. Well, the Hong Kong International Airport enjoys worldwide acclaim for its efficiency. 
but we must not repeat our mistake in terms of sea cargo transport. We should boost our status as the um, as the aviation hub. Um, software and hardware-wise. After commissioning of the 3LS, the uh, cargo throughput at the airport can be increased from 5 million to 10 million tons. However, the key to the full, um, op full operation of the 3LS is a backup a port backup sites. More sites should be set aside to support the logistics operations. Apart from cargo freight, passenger freight also um, take cargo. So in terms of setting up new flight routes and destinations, this will help enhance the cargo uh, handling capacity. There should be more destinations set up. We signed two um, MOUs on cooperating, collaborating with the Zhuhai Airport in November last year. Uh, I strongly support this move. We are highly connected with the rest of the world, whereas for Zhuhai Airport, it's um, connected to many second, third tier cities in the mainland. So we can enhance connectivity by uh, synergizing the operations so as to bolster Hong Kong status as an international aviation hub and make greater contributions to the development of the Greater Bay Area as well as our country. Mr. Te uh, Sunny Tan. Mr. President, I speak in support of the Frankie Yick's original motion, reinforcing Hong Kong status as, an, as a regional logistics hub and the two amendments moved by members. Trading and the logistics industry is one of the four key economic pillars. Um, it, they account for 23.7 percent of uh, GDP uh, in Hong Kong. In the 14 five year plan, the central authorities provides clear support for Hong Kong to enhance its status as a shipping, trading, and logistics center. Altogether, there are eight centers to be set up in Hong Kong. I believe we must bolster our status as a regional logistics hub. We must help develop cross-border e-commerce in Hong Kong. It is essential. In the mainland, cross-border e-commerce, uh, I mean e-commerce uh, has developed very rapidly and there are huge opportunities arising from from events such as uh, November 11th and the B2C Operation mode should be adopted to provide more opportunities. Take textiles industry as an example. With the use of online platform, we can promote sales and tap new markets. The government should start planning for the development of cross-border e-commerce. And one of the key areas is to use um, innovation and technology. Big data, AI, these technologies should be put to use. A big data platform should be set up across uh, Greater Bay Area cities so that we can have data exchange to enhance the efficiency of the uh, supply chain and the logistics chain. More support should be provided uh, to SMEs by the government to develop e-commerce, such as the um, distance business scheme and also the bis, uh, another support scheme to provide subsidy to enterprises interested in setting up an e-commerce platform and also on the pilot subsidy scheme for third-party um, logistics service providers. I support the government's uh, scheme to encourage the adoption of technology to enhance efficiency and productivity. The other crucial link uh, is to um, improve the aviation and the logistics uh, sector, for example, There's a Kolowan High End uh, Logistics Center on the southern part of the uh, airport. And it, there, this is a collaboration with uh, the mainland counterpart. And temperature control, um, I mean, the capacity for handling uh, cold chain storage and temperature controlled cargoes can be enhanced. This will help promote the development of the aviation industry as well. On manpower, there are measures promote, uh, introduced by the government to groom talents. For example, under the MATF, there is a new scheme as announced in the policy address to 
promote the development of human resources in the industry. In 2016, we, we established the Hong Kong International Aviation Academy. We are uh, operating the relevant courses. The government should step up its effort to groom the relevant talents and the image uh, of these courses should be promoted and revamped so as to attract more young people to join the industry. Uh, we should let them know that uh, there is good prospect if you join the industry. Now we resume quarantine-free travel with the mainland. I'm sure that there will be post-COVID uh, uh, recovery of the logistics industry along with ample development opportunities. Mr. Ronick Chen. Under the dual circulation uh, development pattern, Hong Kong is the meeting point of the two circles. We have um, world-class infrastructure facilities, and we are well connected with the world. We are the transshipment center for carbocal to be exported to the rest of the world. Uh, with um, keener competition from neighboring cities, and with problems such as manpower shortage and the lack of um, logistics sites. We face a lot of challenges. I thank Mr. Frankie Yick for moving this motion to urge the government to formulate long-term policies to develop the, the logistics industry, in particular to reinforce Hong Kong status as a regional logistics hub. In 2001, when our country uh, joined the World Trade Organization, we were designated as a free port. I recalled at the at the time, there were a lot of financing activities in Hong Kong. And for a few years, uh, until 2004, Hong Kong was one of the bu busiest ports. But starting in 2015, when we were overtaken by Singapore, our rankings uh, continued to drop. We were overtaken by Shang uh, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Ningbo, and Guangzhou, where they had their respective ports. Now we rank only the 10th. And for Hong Kong port, we uh, our focus is on transshipment, which requires a vast uh, storage facility. We uh, for storage, we have four hundred and twenty-five hectares of land for the for this use, one hundred hectares uh, at the container terminals, and the remaining um, scattered in the new territories. Uh, according to a study in twenty twenty. In terms of the percentage of uh, container yards per container terminal space, we it's only less than one tenth. And uh, if we continue to have shortage of a storage space, it will eat into our competitiveness. In order to maintain Hong Kong's competitive edge, we need to speed things up and meet the demand for land. For example. Um, Port backup uses and uh, modernized logistics uh, space should be set aside uh, for con terminal number one. It was established in 1972. It's a 50-year-old terminal. We need more space to have modern logistics facilities. However, in Kwai Chung is now a residential commercial built up area. There is little space to further expand the facility. There is a need to reprovision Kwai Chung term uh, container terminal. We are in the process of a site investigation for the um, artif artificial islands in central waters. If we set aside space for the reprovisioning of the ports, well in advance, we'll be able to introduce new technologies uh, such as um, automated processing, AI, 5G, and smart technologies to lower the cost. Whereas the port backup sites now scattered in new territories can be consolidated to reduce the uh, time journey time. In Singapore, in 2012, they started to consolidate the uh, logistics sites. The first phase of the project started in 2015. And the container terminal is key to our logistics industry. We should learn from the Singapore experience and uh, relocate this container terminal so as to promote the development of the industry. A few days ago, in an interview, the chief executive mentioned the traditional advantage of the logistics industry. We are good at uh, 
promoting logistics services to the world, whereas uh, Shenzhen is good at uh, domestic logistics. If we can combine the advantages of both cities, we can also promote intermodal connectivity in the greater Bay area city so that we can build a world-class logistics cluster and uh, synergize the uh, operation of ports and complement complement each other's strings and enhance our competitiveness. I support the motion and the amendments. Mr. Frankie, you may now speak on the amendments. President, Dr. Kennedy Wong and Mr. Michael Locke have introduced amendments which enriched my motion. In terms of the development of smart ports and aviation, these are all beneficial to the development of the trade. As a result, I support their amendments. In terms of aviation logistics, I am also very keen to see its development. It only accounts for 2% of our total throughput, but it accounts for 40% of our exports. It shows the importance of aviation logistics to us. Over the past three years, the aviation industry has been hard hit. We had virtually no passenger flights. We still had cargo flights. However, more than half, more than 50% of our aviation cargoes were transported by passenger flights. We suffered a loss of pilots for cargo flights. Now we are resu we are seeing resumption of air traffic, but the speed of um, its recovery depends on the availability of talents. During the epidemic, aviation industry and other logistics industries received support from the government, including the employment subsidy scheme, but it was just a drop in the ocean. Reluctantly, companies have to shut off um, more than half of their employees. Now we are facing a very severe manpower shortage. We need to hire 10,000 employees uh, to fill the vacancies. Concerning the shortage of manpower, the government has to meet with the trade to find a solution. Now the free runway system will be completed by year 2040. By then, another 70,000 employees will be required. The government has to think ahead and take a multi-pronged approach to address the problem, including importation of labor. Otherwise, even with the free runway system completed, it will not be manned. To enhance our position as a regional and international aviation hub, I support the establishment of the Dongguan Airport and Logistic Park and enhance collaboration with the Zhuhai Airport and establish more logistics park in the mainland to open up new um, air routes and uh, enhance catchment area and uh, increase the number of flights. This will help us maintain our status as a regional aviation logistics hub. Concerning the synergy to be created in the GBA, I fully support that. There are five major airports in the GBA, and among the 10 busiest ports in the world, three are located in the GBA, including Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Hong Kong. Because of homo homogeneous um, development, competition ar uh, has arisen among the free ports. As a result, the government has to ensure that different airports and ports in the GBA are working together instead of against each other so that we can enhance and enrich uh, the industry and develop GBA into a world-class cluster of aviation hub to contribute to reduce circulation and development of the country. Now, the development of smart ports is the trend. Singapore, Shanghai, and London have seen development of um, digitalization of their ports as driven by the government. In the government's 2020 policy address, it was announced that the government would develop smart ports actively. The trade welcomes the idea. I also welcome the idea to integrate the platforms held by different stakeholders to establish a common data platform. I so submit. Thank you. Secretary for Transport and Logistics. Madam Deputy, a number of members have spoken on Mr. Frankie Yick's original motion and the amendments by uh, the other two members. I've listened very carefully to members' speeches and I'm grateful to their views. As I said in my opening remarks, 
Hong Kong has an irreplaceable position in terms of the country's aviation and shipping development. We have a solid uh, foundation in uh, aviation and shipping business, and we have world-class airport and port facilities. These are solid support for the development of trade and logistics in Hong Kong. In order to implement the country's strategy, we will continue to launch measures and policies in these areas to enhance Hong Kong's overall competitiveness. On aviation, the three runway system has been developed to boost the airport's capacity. We'll continue to promote the development of high value and high growth freight transport. Freight related to e commerce, temperature control, cargo, and transshipment will be our priorities. On e commerce related freight, Airport Authority is working with various organizations to expand or build new aviation logistics facilities to enhance the airport's capacity to handle cross-border e-commerce cargo. With the commissioning of the 3RS in 2024, Another aviation logistics facilities developed in the airport. The Hong Kong International Airport will be able to handle 10 million tons of cargo from 2035 on. For temperature controlled cargo, the A and the sector have always worked to upgrade the airport's capacity to. Uh, in terms of hardware and software to deal with temperature sensitive cargo, such as the construction of cold chain facilities and obtaining the accreditation of uh, the International Air Transport Association for cold chain transportation of pharmaceuticals, fresh food, and live animals. To promote the growth of logistics industry in GBA, AA is uh, developing a sea air cocoa transshipment mode with between Hong Kong and Guangdong so that. Export cargo from the mainland can be transported seamlessly to an SI air cargo handling facility for direct transshipment to overseas destination. International cargo may also be imported into the mainland through the reverse process. In November 2022, the AA signed a memorandum of understanding with Zhuhai municipal government to better utilize the Hong Kong Chamber car bridge with the shortened distance between Hong Kong and Zhuhai to embark on aviation cooperation for Hong Kong to enhance its role as an aviation hub. For International Shipping Center in the CE's policy address in 2022 to strengthen Hong Kong's position as an international shipping center. There will be a number of uh, incentives, including putting in place cons tax concessions to attract more high value at the shipping business uh, organizations to settle in Hong Kong. Uh, subsequent to the uh, leasing, ship leasing, and uh, marine insurance business uh, tax concessions introduced in 2020 and 2020 respectively. Starting from July 2022, we have been uh, providing uh, tax concessions to uh, lease manage to ship managers, agents, etc. And we will also promote smart port facilities. Through port community systems, we will encourage operators and other stakeholders to share and connect their data information so that our ports can operate in an efficient, cost-effective manner to enhance our port's competitiveness. As an international shipping center, we have been employing different measures to promote the development of green port facilities. And we encourage the industry to adopt more sustainable shipping measures. In this regard, we have ensured that we are in alignment with the International Maritime Organization and our local legislation related to uh, protecting the energy. Hong Kong is the first place in Asia to compel our vessels to turn to low diesel uh, low sulfur diesel when they are birthed at Hong Kong and we encourage our ocean going vessels to use clean energy and to explore the um, way to uh, refill vessels with uh, LPG to encourage more vessels using LPG to birth at Hong Kong. We are also committed to promoting advantages. Thanks to the uh, cooperation of the government and the industry, we have uh, passed uh, BIMCO 
2022 uh, legal and arbitration clause in September 2020. So Hong Kong is now among Singapore, London, New York, and uh, we are among the top maritime arbitration center in the world. We continue to use our advantage as a common law jurisdiction and encourage enterprises to uh, include in their maritime contract a relevant clause to use Hong Kong as a place for uh, resolving uh, their dispute by arbitration. And our Hong Kong Shipping Registry has stepped up support teams in London, Shanghai, Singapore, Sydney, San Francisco, Tokyo, and Toronto to provide ship owners with more expeditious and direct support services. To promote high-value logistics development, we have uh, started the work proposed by the CE in the 2022 policy address. We will strengthen our existing advantages and we will leverage on the uh, strengths of the industry so that together we can formulate strategic and measures for the medium, short and long term and then we can create a favorable environment for further development of the industry. Now, uh, with technology advancement, oh, there are new solutions coming up for digitalized operation and to boost efficiency. And logistics industry all over the world are moving towards smart development. So in October 2020, we launched the two 300 million pilot subsidy scheme for third party logistics system provide service providers to support the local enterprises, uh, especially the small and medium sized ones to upgrade and transform so as to enhance our competitiveness. As at end last year, the pilot scheme has subsidized over 173 projects. Over $130 million have been committed to benefiting over 150 companies. This will effectively assist the local industry to upgrade and transform. Just January, we raised the subsidy percentage of the government in order to lower the demand on a liquidity requirement of service providers. This will further encourage the industry to come forward to apply under the fund so that they can use smart logistics solutions to boost their efficiency and productivity. The government has all along been trying to identify suitable sites to support the development of the industry. This includes earmarking land near the Kwai Cheng Terminal for port backup users. And we are also promoting the development of multi-story modern logistics facilities in sites with potential to maximize land resources. We are now conducting a feasibility study for two sites in Kuiting with potential for modern logistics development. And in new developed areas, we have uh, reserved over 40 hectares of land for modern logistics industry development. I will continue to work with relevant bureaus and departments and reserve suitable sites for the industry to build modern logistics facilities. We agree that manpower training is just as important. And therefore, through the Maritime and Aviation Trading Fund, we are offering various training schemes and scholarships to encourage more young people to receive vocational or professional training related to maritime and aviation business so as to attract new blood for the two sectors. To further support the development of shipping and aviation, we are going to uh, include logistics training into the fund. First, on training of uh, shipping talents, we will continue to operate scholarships and programs and publicize our programs so as to enhance the competitiveness and professionalism of the industry. We will also embark on publicity and public education to enhance the public and young people's understanding of uh, the job nature, the, um, the professional qualifications and job prospects of this sector to attract new blood to join the shipping sector. Within this year, we're going to launch a maritime talents training subsidy scheme so that people who are interested in joining uh, maritime legal work can then have internship 
opportunities to further support the development of this sector. And as for aviation talent training, the Hong Kong International Aviation Academy provides over 110 foundation and professional programs to attract, train, and retain talents and to reduce the resources and time spent by similar companies in training. And uh, the academy also cooperates with aviation training institutions of the mainland. And in the first half of this year, uh, we're going to launch the GBA Youth Internship, Aviation Internship Scheme so that young people from uh, cities within the GBA can then work in airports within the area. And as for manpower training for logistics, we have uh, subsidized the Hong Kong Logistics Association to develop co-chain logistics certification and training programs to promote the development of Hong Kong into a cold chain logistics center. We've also subsidized enterprises to offer internship places for young people so that they get to know about the job nature and prospects of this sector and encourage more young people to join this sector. We will continue to work with the industry and enhance the development of the the logistics industry and manpower training so as to enhance the competitiveness of our logistics sector. I thank members for their views. With regard to the observations and views made by members, I provide the following consolidated response. Some members asked whether we should have a modern logistics uh, center in Hong Kong. This is about long-term land use of uh, the government, whether we should continue to have uh, tenders or, or should there be other modes of development. Since the sector have different views on the development of logistics uh, sites, including uh, the uh, establishment of a logistics park, now views are diverse. When we work on the action plan to promote Modern logistics development, we will follow up on this and discuss with uh, stakeholders. Some members ask uh, what long term plans do we have to enhance the competitiveness of our port so that we will not be replaced. Hong Kong is an international logistics hub. We have our own strengths, which I will not repeat anymore. Now, we are uh, the portal into mainland for international shipping companies and vice versa. As I said in my opening remarks, many well-renowned um, shipping companies have uh, chosen to set up offices in Hong Kong. This goes to show that Hong Kong is a premium uh, choice for setting up their bases here. So we will continue to encourage enterprises to use our services. And uh, in particular, we will grasp the opportunities of development in the western part of the country. And then uh, we can also uh, develop uh, cold chain logistics. We are committed to develop high value aid aviation services in Hong Kong to strengthen Hong Kong's position as an international aviation center. Some members uh, talked about the um, coordination of the ports in GBA. Now, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Hong Kong have their own ports with uh, their own advantages and strengths, and I think the division of labor is more or less um, uh, complete. Hong Kong uh, is well connected with other parts of the world, and uh, Zhuhai or Guang, uh, Guangdong uh, can deal with uh, cargo that need to be uh, Hong Kong can deal with cargo very expeditiously. And together with ports in Shenzhen and Guangcha, Guangdong, we can offer reliable, efficient services for the uh, cargo industry. We'll continue to explore cooperation with other ports in GPA. We will enhance communication and we will promote collaboration. Some members asked how, uh, by means of promoting high value logistics, we can boost our competitiveness. We understand that the operating costs in Hong Kong are relatively higher than other ports. In order to maintain 
Hong Kong's competitiveness as a logistics hub will continue to roll out measures to support the development of the logistics industry towards high value added and a high growth cargo. Now we have very efficient uh, customs clearance uh, position. Uh, so for cargo that are temperature sensitive and time sensitive, uh, such as um, pharmaceuticals and uh, fresh food, we can offer high value uh, added services. We have cold chain services and uh, we can add value added services and uh, we can boost our logistics industry's competitiveness in this way. We support the sector to leverage on their experience and strengths, and then we should enhance the airport's capability to deal with cold chain goods. We will enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of our terminals. We will provide subsidies to companies here to help them to upgrade and transform so that Hong Kong can be a high value added logistics services center. Some members asked how we can further promote the training of maritime talents. Now, we plan that under the Maritime and Aviation Training Fund, two new items. We will provide internship and training for people who are interested to work in maritime law. And uh, by providing scholarships, we can subsidize and encourage young employees in the shipping center to uh, enroll in professional maritime courses. And the Maritime and Aviation Training Fund was set up in 1917-18. Uh, starting from 2017-18, it's been cooperating with the Hong Kong University Polytechnic University. The fund offers scholarships to attract outstanding uh, students uh, to uh, take up these to take these programs and then join the sectors afterwards. Uh, some members mentioned relocation of the Kuiting terminal. Now we must have comprehensive thinking about that, including uh our planning for our ports, uh, the uh, logistics arrangement, the uh, demand, other traffic and transport demands, and also sustainability. To reprovision a sizable and international container terminal with excellent facilities is not. It's no simple task. We need berthing spaces. We need sufficient back port backup users. We have a well-developed infrastructure near Kuiting Terminal uh, with an excellent transport network. So um, using the Kuiting Terminal can uh, complement the port backup users in the vicinity. Our port operates very smoothly. We'll continue to strengthen the facilities of our port and enhance its competitiveness. We'll monitor the development of our port, including the amount of throughput, and we will provide the necessary port facilities and infrastructure to support the development of our port. Some members talked about setting up a statutory maritime board or port board. Now, the maritime and port board was set up in 2016. It has been operating very smoothly and effectively. Many uh, new measures related to our port development have come from the board. When it comes to uh, having a statutory body, where well, different ports have different needs and hence uh, different developments, and we have to take into account some very fundamental issues. For instance, uh, the type of uh, statutory powers uh, given to the port and also its uh, financial uh, support, etc., should all be carefully considered. We will maintain close liaison with the board 
in order to strengthen Hong Kong's position as an international shipping center. I thank members valuable views on this motion to reinforce Hong Kong's status as a regional logistics hub. All the suggestions will be carefully considered to enhance the competitiveness of our logistics industry and we will uh, fully utilize our advantage having the uh, country as our backup and being well connected to the world and we will continue to strengthen Hong Kong's position as an international aviation shipping and logistics center. Thank you. Yes. I now call upon Dr. Kennedy Wong to move an amendment. Madam Deputy, I move my amendment. I propose the question to you that Dr. Kennedy Wong's amendments be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. With those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present, that is, those returned by the election committee and those returned by functional constituents, constituencies and geographical constituencies. I declare the amendments passed. Mr. Michael Locke, as Dr. Kennedy Wong's amendment has been passed, you may move your further amendment. Madam Deputy, I move my further amendment. I propose the question to you that Mr. Michael Locke, uh, Mr. Michael Locke's further amendments be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. With those in favour, please raise the hands. Those against, please raise the hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present, that is, those returned by the election committee and those returned by functional constituencies and geographical constituencies. I declare the amendments passed. Mr. Frankie Yick, you still have one minute, four seconds to reply, then the debate will come to a close. Mr. Frankie Yick. Madam Deputy, first of all, I thank Dr. Kennedy Wong and Mr. Michael Luke for moving amendments on my motion, and also the 28 members who have spoken. It highlights the importance of today's motion debate for the Hong Kong SAR government. It also highlights the challenges and obstacles faced by the transport and logistics sector and how to overcome them. I urge the government to consider our suggestions carefully so that we can continue to develop this economic pillar of Hong Kong, which will enrich our job market and um, promote economic development. Now, I think the Secretary just now might have misunderstood what Mr. Yim Gong said. Now, in the um, GBA, there are three ports because of homogeneous development. There is um, a, an unfavorable competition, and unlike um, what Mr. Sec uh, the Secretary said there is division of labour. I don't think so. Um, time's up. I now put the question to you that Mr. Frankie Yick's motion, as amended by Dr. Kennedy Wong and Mr. Michael Locke, be passed. With those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present, that is, those returned by the election committee and those returned by functional constituencies and geographical constituencies. I declare the motion, as amended, passed. The Council now adjourns. The Council will resume at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow morning for the CNE, uh, for the C question and answer time.